Good morning, Commanders. It's time for another series of carrier jumps, uh, and today we're going over to Gandhavi, which is getting closer and closer to uh, Colonia. I've been doing a bit of um, navigation just to work out what we've got to do. And glad to say we should be in Colonia for Friday. At the end of today, we will just have 14 jumps left till Colonia, so we're not that far off at all. And then once we get to Colonia, it's going to be two weeks in Colonia. People can have a look around, unlock engineers, see what there is about, have a bit of an explore, maybe do some missions, that kind of thing. And then we'll head off to Sagittarius A-Star, which, according to my navigation calculations, is probably going to take us about five days. It's 23 jumps. So, yes. It's, you know, it's, it's, we're getting there, we're getting there. So, a little bit of news. Um, Hebridean Isles, the carriers have decided that... Uh, to try and solve there's a bit of a workaround to try and solve a bit of an issue with restocking things like uh subsurface missiles um so what we've gone and done is we've gone and reduced down to zero the carrier fees for rearming and restocking hopefully that will try and solve the situation but i think at the end of the day it's probably something that might need to be hot patched and maybe is something that will be in update 12 so hopefully that'll be something that we can get sorted because currently at the the moment the only way that commanders are able to get around that um commander hatch has just said you know not sure it's worked we're still testing so we'll have to see but you know keep us informed about that situation uh it has been reported i believe and we'll just have to see, you know, what happens. It's a bit of a pain, really, because we kind of rely on the carrier rearming and refueling um, a lot, especially once we get out into uh, deeper space. So if we can find a workaround, that will be great. So today's route... I've actually marked in all of the route. So as you can see, that that is the line into Colonia now, which is, you know, quite, it's not that far. We're getting, we're getting closer. We're getting much closer, which is great. Uh, that is where Commander Hatch is. So he's gone on ahead with Commander Dimebar, whose carrier left uh, this morning. Um, what time did Commander Dimebar leave the system this morning, Commander Hatch? Do you know? I assume you do know, because you were on board. But yeah, it's um, tomorrow is going to be pretty tough because it's eight jumps. But then um, Friday, it'll just be six jumps into Colonia. And we are stopping at Commander Hatch's. Uh, he's, he's in Ed's 38 faction. And um, faction, squadron, whatever it is. Uh, well, they are a faction as well, aren't they? Um so we're going to be stopping there, mainly because Colonia itself is absolutely packed. Absolutely packed, full of carriers. So it would probably be pretty tricky. In fact, the last time I looked, it was saying, you know, that it wasn't going to allow any more carriers in. So I don't know whether that's changed, but, you know, it's the popularity of the place. That's the problem. All carrier commanders want to end up there but we're going to be not that far away. It's, I'll just zoom into Colonia. So Colonia is there and we we'll, we will be arriving there. And it's quite a nice little system 
in Colonia. There's a few carriers there already. But it's relatively quiet compared with the likes of Colonia. We'll have a look at Colonia and just see the number of fleet carriers that are there, which is colossal. Um, see whether it's giving any warnings out as well. Not much room at the inn. As you can see, the number of carriers is massive. And most of them don't seem to move. That's the annoying thing. Play a minor faction, according to um, Commander Hatch. But, um, they did work hard to get the system, which uh, included... You had to run... Was it Galactic Guides or something? Um, to get the system. Or to get your faction, minor faction, into Colonia, uh, which meant, you know, them having to collect them from the bubble and then actually transport them out to uh, Colonia, which was uh, a massive undertaking. I believe that Commander Hatch still has the flashbacks. But yeah, it's, it's just ridiculous there. Um, I'm going to have to find a carrier admin system at some point to restock everything on board the carrier outfitting, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem. I can just dive in and out of a system, move the carrier for an hour, sort it all out, and then uh, restock, and then we're ready for the next uh, stage which is Sagittarius A-Star. Which um, isn't as far away, which is good. It's, you know, I think it's, did I say 23 jumps? Something like that. So, you know, we should easily be able to cover that in five days. We are going to reduce the number of jumps going from Colonia to Sagittarius A-Star down to five. This is mainly for our own sanity, but also, uh, you know, it means that uh, the jumps will be completely quicker, which means that car uh, carriers, the carrier can release uh, the explorers earlier. So that's a lot better for everybody, I think. And we're not in any rush. So we've got 11 minutes to go before the first jump. Thanks to Phileas Fogg Jr. for the follow last night. Much appreciated. I did a video which has been linked in the Discord yesterday. Just a rough guide to mining, which it was a very rough guide. Uh, I don't uh, regard myself particularly as an expert miner. I sort of get by. But it was just running through what you need and just showing some of the ways, best ways of getting tritium. So far, we've been doing great. The carriers have been refilled. Um, I start, I did, actually did a bit of both yesterday. I did a bit of mining. I managed to get about 60, 70 tonnes, I think it was. But I also went and bought some tritium from the cannon complex and loaded it onto Commander Hatch's and Commander Dimebar's carriers. So uh, I actually ended up spending some of my exploration money just to... I don't want our mining crews to burn out quite yet. I'm afraid we're going to be ending up doing a lot of mining, probably. Um, certainly coming back from Beagle Point, it'd be interesting to see how the fuel lasts on the way to Beagle Point. We might just use the last bits of tritium in the tank as we arrive in Beagle Point, and then we've got to refill the carrier. But I think we have a few commanders, dedicated commanders, doing that. I don't think it'll be too much of a problem. 
It's one of the challenges of exploration. So yeah, it does seem as though the solution that uh, we were we heard about or Commander Hatch heard about doesn't actually work. So hopefully that is something that's going to be patched while we're on the the way to Sagittarius A star, or hopefully it will be sorted out as we go along. I also actually added some tritium from my reserve to uh, to the tanks of Hebridean Isles just to give me that little bit of leeway there because there's I don't want the tank completely filling up. Um, I don't want the capacity of the carrier totally filling up. Sorry, uh, mainly because. I need that space um, for restocking the outfitting, so I've, I've got to make a bit of a gap. I did take some fuel on from Shelter N7, commander who had some tritium a, a couple of days ago and wanted to go out exploring, but he, he had no way of getting rid of it because by the time he'd brought it back, the carriers were full, so I ended up buying it off of him. So I was only really using that fuel up that um, Shelter had uh, needed rid of. But yeah, we're getting close to Colonia, folks, which is great. Six and a half minutes to go till the next jump. Not too bad today. I think we ended up doing eight jumps yesterday uh, due to a slight quirk. Uh, the first jump was slightly too far, so we actually had to take the slip road onto the main route and then do it that way. Commander Hatch thought it was nine, but it was only eight. Commander Hatch is in Discord, so we'll see whether... Hello? Hello? Ah. You're Hello? there. Yep. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, I'm just uh, turning off your stream sound, so I don't hear you twice. Yeah. So, you went this morning with Commander Dimebar. How was that? Unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> what What made you do that? Well, just, I... You were just there. I took some tritium to him last night. Yeah. Filled him up, and then went off to make dinner, and never got back onto the game again to, to move my ship. Ah. So, uh, logged in this morning thinking, oh, I'll just, I'll just check how Dimebar's doing. And when I appeared on the carrier while it was jumping, I thought, yeah, this is, um, I'm in the wrong place again, aren't I? Yeah, that's, it's, it, I think it's just a quirk of, of when Commander Dimebar's able to move his carrier because, you know, he's a, he's a busy chap, so... It's, it's it's fine. It's just poor planning on my part. <laughs> but yeah, it's at least we're at least we're getting near the end of the Colonia journey. I don't think I'd be able to uh, do another week. Would you? No, I think I'd need a rest. Um, I mean mainly. I think 
the problem is with the Colonia thing is we, we've sort of got to reach certain points because it's the fuel there. I mean, like I said, I, I went and um, refueled your carrier yesterday from Cannon Complex. Right. I, th I thought, mainly because I was having a really bad time with the subsurface missiles. I was just missing everything, you know, trying to get the line into the little box, couldn't do it. And I just thought, right, I've had enough of this and just left the mining zone and just went back and bought, I think it was about three, four hundred tons. Um, you know, it wasn't that much. It was about eight million credits, something like that per load. And uh, yeah, I, I, I bought some for both you and uh, Dime Bar as well, just to. And also the other thing is, is I, I didn't want the I, d I don't want to rely on the miners too much uh, or overstress them at the moment because I I think you know we are going to need them. Well, want... You know, once we get really deep out, uh, I, like I say, I haven't actually worked it out yet. I don't know whether I'll be able to, but I think we might be okay to get to somewhere like. Um, we'll certainly be fine to get to Sagittarius A Star. We've got enough fuel to do that, even if we don't mine, even if we don't take any more on board. But, oh, it's. it's um... You know, you want to give people the opportunity to do some exploration on an exploration mission, don't you? Definitely. Definitely. And I think, you know, uh, we, we, we're we not rushing. Uh, you know, also, I suppose the gap where some people might want to go exploring, some people will just maybe do some mining. So it, it also gives a, a, a break from exploring around. You've got alternatives. You can uh, come back to the carrier and do a bit of mining and add a bit of tritium to the uh, to the carrier. Um, but yeah, I just don't want the miners burning out too quickly. Oh, we're getting very close to the off. Two minutes. Tomorrow's going to be a bit tough because it's eight jumps. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to be tough. <laughs> Super tough. Um, I'm, I'm in, uh, was it Gardivari? Yeah. And uh, there doesn't look like there's an awful lot of tritium for sale. No, there isn't. I mean, this, this, this side this side of... We're, we're starting to get into an area where there's not that much tritium. I believe... I'd have to have a look at the Discord. Um, but I believe... That it's. Let's have a look. It's high. Oh, there is a little bit. So there's a there's a few tons here. There's two hundred. I believe tons. it's um, CB fifty two Nikita Orbital, which is in a system I'm not even going to try and pronounce. But there is a bit there. But I believe that was one of the systems that was odyssey only it was on a a, a port an odyssey port so right. we would have to refuel commander dimebar well, there's there's uh cb42 colonia's endeavor mega ship has got has got a bit of tritium on it and that's the only stuff i've found so far that's a that's a couple of hundred tons so we will get into The navigation map and we'll get on that first line. Are you uh, you giving up for the first one, eh? I will do like yep. Ready to go. First jump of the day. Okay, so that was B38-8, that's the one, isn't so it? So we've got 15 minutes to go. B38.8, uh, let's set carry up. All right, here we go. Yeah, mine's uh, queued up, ready to go as well. So I'll get out of my ship, I think. So I'm in the cutter, which I was delivering fuel yesterday. Oh, yeah, I forgot how big cutters are. It's a half-hour walk just to find the uh, the entrance in there. Absolutely massive ship. 
you don't really it's only since odyssey i think that you start to get a sense of how big some of these ships are i think the thing that throws most people is the fact that the cockpits are so big from the outside so when you look at your ship you think oh you know it's it's not that big Just trying to see. Oh, I'm just trying to see where they could actually put. Some, I mean, actually, the, the mo the most sensible place for a message board would be there. Change that from Hebridean Isles that board and just have that as a massive message board. I mean, there's you know, there's a whole thing, load of things you could do. Uh, I mean, also the messages could appear sort of like in that. I appear to have maintenance. But it, it certainly needs, you know, at least a couple of boards. I don't know you whether know, we've got any commanders the, on the board. Uh, the notice boards that have got the, the carrier jump timer on it could, could also display the the messages when you're not jumping. Yeah. I mean, there's all sorts of ways that you could use it. Um, you know, Stick it on your list. Stick it on your list. <laughs> saying when, saying when you are, you know, when you're jumping. Say where, you know, if there's any squadron activities that you're doing. Hello, Smiley. Yeah, I mean, there's all sorts of ways that you could use, uh, sort of like a mission board. Um, but it just. I mean, we've said before, we have no idea how many commanders we have on board. There, there are, of course, those commanders who are, you know, in our Discord and following us on Twitter and things. But outside of that, people who just heard about it from, you know, the, the FDEV newsletter who were on board. I've certainly seen commanders on the flight deck. Um, there's a commander, Paul Ninja, who I don't think is in Discord. And I had can't... It's, it's so confusing because people have got multiple identities. Yeah. But it, it's it's just one of those things where I think, um, you know, why should the communication be external when it comes to, you know, a carrier? It should be internal. There should be some sort of functionality for it. But that's always been the gripe, though. People have been complaining about the uh, player minor faction communication as well. You know, you've, you've got some squadron stuff you can do. You can set like a message of the day, but that's it. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think probably, you know, the thing that, you know, Frontier would be concerned about is, you know, um, how p commanders might use it. But, you know, I'm sure that they could put some filters and things in there to make sure that it isn't uh, abused. Bit of a dark system, this one. I think it's just the way my carrier was parked, I think, because the star's underneath the carrier. Yeah, it's kind of random as to where it you know, ends up and what it's facing, doesn't it? The destination today has got plenty of stars. <laughs> oh, he's starting to get into that. Yeah, you really notice the difference now. That's one of the nice things about the Colonia area is you get that, you know, uh, well, it's a nebula, of course, isn't there? And also the the thick star field, the star density is a lot higher. So I think any new players who haven't been out of the, the bubble are going to find it an amazing place.
Do you manage to get much exploration done yourself? Not right. really yet. Um, I've bookmarked a whole load of stuff <laughs> for the future. About but, the um, only about the only thing I did in this system was mine. That was it. And that was, you know, uh, I, I didn't actually mine a huge amount compared with some of the other systems. I think, I, like I say, I, I did about 60 tons, I think, altogether. But, it, you know, it doesn't matter how much you mine, because I've seen commanders say, you know, oh, I've only been able to mine, you know, sort of like 20 tons. It doesn't matter. Well, the more people who mine, the less you need to do. Yeah. And also, you know, it's 20 tons that the carrier didn't have. So, you know, and someone else might have got 80 tons. So, you know, that's... If you think about it, we need 133 tons to move 500 light years. You know, so if, you know, if you just managed to do sort of like 70 tons, you've managed to get enough tritium to move the carrier, you know, 250 light years. Uh, I'm sat down in the seat, so I've got to stand back up. It's quite annoying that when you sit down, you can't do anything. You can't access any of your menus or... It even, is. Even, it even is. the emotes or chat or anything, you know, you can't... So you I... can't sit next to somebody and have a chat with them. Using I the don't on, know. You know. Do you chat? get the impression that the carrier release was sort of... You know, we can go with this, we can go with this, we could just add other bits later. Um, but it's sort of like, you know, that FDEV release, but not quite maybe as ready as well, it could I, have been. I don't think carrier interiors were really intended. I think it's something that they, they managed to do. And so there's a, there's a few rough edges, but um, I think it's, you know, I, oh, been I quite th popular. I think they'll, I think they'll, hopefully they will bash out those rough edges and it will... Um, I think there's a bit of optimization to do on the carriers, isn't there, for a start off, uh, performance wise. Um, but, I mean, like there is in certain other areas, I mean, some of the other stations and even some of the planets, you can see a performance drop uh, depending on what planet you land on. I think there's also some. Uh quirky alignment issues that go on when you have more than one person in the instance yeah i mean i i i can't remember what i was doing yesterday but i mean you know there's there's little things like the the crew stuck in actually being absorbed into the ship structure um like something out of the philadelphia experiment um it's it's a good start. I mean, maybe, like I say, we don't know what's in update 12. So, I mean, it would be nice to know if there was some improvements. I'm yeah, hoping, so I think hoping update... this screen here is going to be usable. It's well, very pretty. 12, update 12 is the first one that is really completely after the, the console decision, isn't it? Yeah, the, I fact mean... being, the fact they're being so quiet about it makes me think that maybe there's a um, there's some story elements that they're going to be throwing into the throwing into the game. I mean, what what do you think is going to be the big change development wise when it comes to um, the console decision? Well, for, I think for, they were piece, for PC back. commanders. I mean, do you think we're we're going to get the updates more often or? I... I think they were holding back an awful lot of Odyssey stuff because they didn't want to release it while they were still thinking about getting the consoles online because you didn't want to have things spoiled, especially sort of if it's big sort of story related, Thargoid related or whatever it is. Mm. You didn't want to have all that going on with the for PC Odyssey players when the um, you know, console guys were still waiting for Odyssey. But now that's no longer the case. I think that sort of freed them up to move forward with that. Yeah. I think the uh, it's going to be interesting to see how much they I mean, tweak with some of the core mechanics of the game. I don't know. I, don't, I mean, do you I, think? I suspect not. Do you think we'll expect we can expect more regular patches than we than we got? I, I don't think we'll get more regular patches. I think what we'll do, what we could see, is more content within those patches, those updates, potentially. Yeah. 
I mean, there certainly was a drag factor to consoles being on board, wasn't there? You know, the fact we were saying this yesterday that the fact that uh, you know consoles, I think Dimebar said that there was a cost uh, that Sony had, you know, for each update, you know, that FDev would have to pay. Uh, and it's, then it's, it's probably a, probably an admin type cost, I think. And then and then you know it's uh, didn't it have to be like certified by them before they would release it onto the platform and everything, which is going to delay things. Yeah, so there's 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 some um, you know hoops you got to jump through to get to get things released. Whereas if you can just bash out, you know, say right the update's ready, you know it's going to be updated next Tuesday. The game's going to be updated you know, next Tuesday at 2 o'clock or whatever it is, you can just... So it sort of frees FDev up a bit by just going over to PC, which, you know, it's is great for PC commanders, but, you know, I still feel, you know, for the console commanders, um, you know, any, command, any commander leaving the game is not good. It's... It's one of the. It would have been interesting in a parallel universe to see if Odyssey had a be, was going to become part of uh, the console players. You know, they were going to get access to it. Whether we would have had more interest from the console side of um, the commanders than well, we actually you know, did. From, from a commercial point of view, FDev wanted. To get as many elite dangerous commanders to purchase the update as possible, that would be their starting point. You know, they want to make yeah. it. You know, you want to get as many people to migrate to Odyssey as possible. I think that's. Do you think they will offer a discount? What to console players? Mm. I don't think they'll offer them a discount on Odyssey. I think, if anything, they may um, give them uh, a copy of the base game for free. Yeah, which wouldn't be too bad, would it? But I mean, it's, uh, so you know, an, an Odyssey com uh, sorry, console commander moving from a console to the PC, if they can get their commander transferred and they get a free copy of the PC game base game, then there's no sort of barriers to moving across if they've got the the ability to do so. And obviously, not all commanders can do that. And then it's their choice as to whether or not they want to 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 buy Odyssey. I mean, we'll probably never know, but it will be interesting to see. It would be interesting to see how many console commanders actually do make the the move. Whether it's you know 25% of those con former console commanders or 50%. Um, but it's like I was saying to Commander Dimebar um, when we were doing our show uh, on your stream. Uh, was it yesterday? Yeah. Yeah, I think it was. Um, it's like a long time ago, doesn't it? It does. Uh, but. It's like we, you know, like we were saying, to actually switch over to go out and buy a gaming PC, um, just to play Odyssey, even if you are able to put your, it's probably something that a lot of people won't consider. Maybe they, well, it's a, I've it's certainly a big commitment, especially at the moment with you know everything else, all the other pressures you've got. And I mean, also, you know, to a certain extent, some people prefer gaming on a console anyway rather than a PC, especially if they end up working all day with a PC. The last thing they want to be doing, I, mean, I end up working most days in front of a PC, so it doesn't really make any difference. I think as long as you make sure that you get breaks and things. Uh, and you don't look out that window once a day. Yeah. As long as you don't overstrain your eyes too much. Um, but... You know, I can certainly understand why some commanders would be reluctant to switch over to the PC. It is a shame because some of them are quite well established commanders in the community as well, so. Yeah, I know, it's just disappointing, but there's not a lot we can do about it, is there? It's, uh... No, and as a new commander, I suppose it's the lifespan of the game and things change, people come in, people go out. Sometimes well, I mean, it, it's a bit it of a bumpy to... ride. I mean, we had a similar thing happen when they removed the um, Apple Mac support. Yes. And, yeah. No. Okay. We we had we had some people who had um, PCs so they could migrate to that. Some people managed to get you know uh, get it running under emulation, uh, but not particularly well. Um, but I think we lost we lost quite a few people at that point as well. 
ob obviously, you know, <laughs> the Mac was uh, a lot more niche than console. Yeah, I mean, and a lot of that was to do with the way that Apple were doing things, wasn't it? It wasn't really FDev's fault particularly. It was just that um, something wasn't supported, was it? Was it uh, shaders yeah, it was or some something? Of the, was it, it shaders? Was some of the technology, technology they needed for Horizons, yeah. Right, I'm queuing up my second jump now. So that's the first jump done for Heb Isles. Six yeah, more to go. My three minute, three minute cooldown. Is it, is, is it five minutes or three minutes? What's the, what's the cooldown? Three minutes. Really? I, think, I think it's three minutes. Well, I've got a countdown of three minutes 35 at but, the moment. So yeah, it's... sometimes, it, I mean, it's a bit like the cooldown can sometimes be 16 minutes, not 15. Um, I've certainly had it where the cooldown period between, um, you know, and the, the cooldown has been about four minutes and then the the actual jump has been about 16 so you know the the countdown to the jump has been 16 so you end up with basically 20 minutes we roughly work on three jumps an hour don't we according to the internet it's officially five minutes cool down and you see it all adds up so i suppose you know 20 minutes so you know, maybe maybe one compensates for the other. You know, if it if it's four minutes for cooldown, it will make it sixteen minutes for the 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 countdown or something like that. I've certainly seen it where it's sixteen minutes. If it's if you're taking more than twenty minutes per jump, then you're not pulling your weight, are you? I mean, you know, when FDev came out with that thing about uh, it being an hour cool down i mean that would be great if you had the tools in place where like we were saying on the uh campbell and dime bar show um that if you had a, a an app on your phone that you could actually you know so you'd be downstairs or out and about and think well i'll move the carrier to the next next waypoint um or even, no. even if you're, even if uh, the app just told you that your carrier had now arrived, so you could go and move it manually, it um, that would be a start. At least you could sort of wander off and do something and, and wait for the notification. So I was just actually taking a look at my costs. So the whole maintenance. I mean, we've done twenty-eight jumps so far since the last uh, since. Thursday, um, which means that tomorrow I'll probably end up with three million, not five hundred thousand, maybe something like that, as uh, hall maintenance costs, which you know is not that much really. I'm, I'm not even looking at it. <laughs> um, I mean, they, they they sort of like all add up. But um, I'm I'm giving mine a, a, a you know, strong ignoring. But as you can see, I mean, this is where you set all of your service tariffs, and the reason why it's a five percent for the Pioneer Supplies and Shipyard is because they're the most expensive to run, um, along with outfitting. They do cost quite a bit in uh, carrier fees, but the re armory refueling and repair has been put down to zero now, so. And it will stay there. Yeah, so I'm still trying to test the uh, the situation with the, um, the the problem we're having with the rearming. So uh, trying to get everyone to you know, trying to get people to log out, relog, and see if they're still experiencing the problem. Yeah, it's a bit of a pain, isn't it? <sighs> so uh, Millstone Barn was the one who was doing the testing for me on his carrier, and he managed to get it to work. And so he was, he could see that the, it seemed to work fine. He set his um, tariff to 3% or whatever it was, and then uh, tried it again. He then got the server error, reset it back to zero, and he didn't again. But he was relogging each time. Right, we'll tidy up behind us. Get rid of that bookmark. It's also a good indication of how long we are along the route. So that's been set for the next jump. 
Yeah, I don't forgot about that. I should, I should do that. Looks like get rid of the bookmark in the current system, and then it's a good indication of how far along the route we are. This is jump number two. I think I might have figured out what happened the other day when we had the problems with the... And it, a lot of it was me being updated about where the carrier was. So what I think happened, because I, I went and checked back the stream footage, and what I think happened was, in the map, the carrier had actually moved to the next system, but right. it still indicated that it was in the previous system. So when I were I was essentially trying to jump the carrier to the same system it was actually in, even though ah, right. it didn't indicate that it was in that system. That's a bit odd. So it's it? sort of it was sort of like a bit like carrier moonwalking in a way, you know, where because normally you get two um, graphics, don't you? The icons you get the one which has got your standard sort of fleet carrier icon and then you get one which is the fleet carrier icon but with the the root icon inside it yes so yeah, that's currently you currently you know so it's it's that icon there isn't it the basically the, yeah, the waypoint I, I, type arc icon and but, but something something weird happened that morning yeah whether it was something to do also with the fact that they were having um issues with the system weren't they at the time Probably didn't yeah, help was, either. Connection issues, yeah. Uh, if something isn't connecting up somewhere properly along the line, it's 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 not going to. We rely on everything working all together. I did actually get a fine yesterday in uh, the system from um, Canon or whoever it was for 150 credits. There I was. Going towards Mornington Crescent with my tritium in the hold, and then all of a sudden the pirate just suddenly appeared out of nowhere, and I just ran straight into him, even though he was threatening to kill me and take my uh, cargo. Um, I still got the 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 fine. So that, was that reckless flying? Yeah. Or was it just that just or that you know, thought you'd attack him? It happens a lot, doesn't it? You know where you're. You know, you manage to get to the, the station, you know, there's some pirate after you and you manage to actually get to the station and you're just sort of going into the final sort of like landing cycle and everything, just about to go through the slot. And all of a sudden a ship will suddenly appear right in front of you and you, there's nothing you can do. The only thing you can do is just hit it. And, um, yeah, and then the fine is issued, even though the guy is saying, you know, I'm going to cut your legs off and take your cargo and did I, did I tell you uh, my uh, wife has got um, an NPC name in the game one of the yeah she uh, did yeah yeah so, so one of the sort of um, beta backers rewards was to get, a, get you know put an NPC name in when so did you her name in. when did you back the game then Oh, that was that was uh, for premium beta. So it was a long, long time ago. It was right at the, you know right at the start of the Kickstarter almost. Because I I got in uh, like I say I I got in towards the end. I mean I think uh, the game went live about six weeks after I, I got premium beta access. So I I just came in right at the end. It was it was when there was that small they were testing out the bubble. Um, around iBootis, I think it was, where there was just a few systems there just to see how commanders interacted and whether all of the systems were working, um, you know, local economy and yeah. things like that. And that's when I that's when I came in, so I was fairly late to it. I did manage yeah, so to get when I when I started the first, the very first thing that we played was there were no systems, there was just some some combat scenarios, and that was it. Yeah. Hi, Phil. 
So Love anyway, it. um Loving with, Phil's with, pictures by the way. I've got to mention oh, Phil's fantastic. in Discord. They're absolutely amazing. Um it's an absolute treat seeing what Phil's found. Um you know, in the photographies. What I'm gonna do, um, at some point is is put together a I'll I'll make sure there's credits and everything, but I'll put together a a, a gallery that we we will uh play. I will try and do that for next Monday when we're setting out towards uh, oh no, we're not sitting out towards Sagittarius A star. What am I talking about? Oh, and it'll be a good point to do it. This is like we could do a little bit of a gallery of of Leg One, couldn't we? We could have a wander around Colonia or something on Monday. Um, I'll just... um, I've got some ideas. I'll talk to you about off stream. All oh, right. Oh, he's got a plan. I haven't That's got a plan. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's not that it hasn't coalesced that far yet. But I've got. I've got some ideas. I'm trying to encourage Commander Dimebar to do a bit of streaming because I actually think he'd be quite good at it, even if it was just sort of like gaming uh, streaming. Um, you know, no narration. I mean, it's something that well, it, I'll, I'll probably do a bit of next talk. week as well. Oh, yeah, he can certainly talk. I mean, he's great. great. He's great, Commander Dimebar, at, you know, chatting about the game and everything. And he's certainly got a passion for it as well. Well, I think it's also interesting to get you know, a console player and a, and a player who's a lot newer to the game than we are as well. We do open. we do have a PS4 player on board. Um, there was a, a player that contacted me directly. Uh, he DM'd me. Uh, it was about three days before we were going to set off and, and said, he's actually both. He's 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 got Odyssey on PC, so he's got... I believe he's got two accounts. He's got one which is his main account, which is on PlayStation. And then there's another account, which is on uh, PC. And he just said, you know, which one do you think I, I should bring? And I said, bring both. I said, we're going to be out a long time. And the last thing you want is to think, oh, I wish I'd have brought my Odyssey commander with me. Um, because the vast majority of his fleet were was PlayStation. On the so now, now you've now you've given him that that top advice to bring both. The uh, F Dev will release update twelve, which will be a whole load of new on foot missions in the bubble, and he'll be cursing you for it. Well, oh, that's it. I suppose that's a risk, isn't it? But you know, won't be the only one um, cursing because uh, you know. A lot of commanders who are who are out in the black, you know, won't be. I mean, that's the problem, isn't it? If you release something that's quite bubble centric and you've got a lot of commanders uh, who are outside of the bubble, which there are, there are commanders who are based in Colonia and various other different places. You know, it's almost like the update doesn't exist. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the uh, my player minor faction, they've got multiple accounts. They'll, they'll keep you know one or two in the bubble and one or two in Colonia just so that they've got I mean, it was. Options. I mean, it was a bit like you know when the the carriers arrived at first. I mean, they were great in game, but uh, anybody who was wasn't interested in carriers, couldn't afford one, didn't want one. There's lots of commanders who don't want the hassle of a uh, running a, a fleet carrier. You know. When they did the carrier interiors, did you have to get back to the bubble to get your interior, or could you do that from Colonia? Um, I'm just, I think you could do that from Colonia. I think as long as you were in somewhere where there was a carrier administration, I think yeah, you it, were. There is a carrier administration in Colonia, isn't there? Am I right? I there, I'm just, I think there's about three. Right. Um, Colonia is the main one uh, where I think a lot of people go to, which is the reason why it's absolutely packed. That's, that's why it's always stuffed, isn't it? But I think um, there's a, at least two or three other systems. Uh, uh, this is something I'm going to have to check out. I think I've got a good idea where one is. Um, if we go back into the galaxy map. I think I actually marked it on my map. Just head out there but yeah it's i know a number of explorers who are in deep space came all the way back to somewhere in order to get the interiors 
Uh, they wanted they wanted the uh, Vista, uh, um, you know. Maybe I haven't marked it on there. I'm not quite sure. Doesn't look as though I have. I'll, I'll probably have to look on an R or something like that and, you know, just get a few locations. Like I say, I've got to restock anyway, so I've got to find a carrier administration. There, there needs to be a, a selection that sort of filters by carrier administration on the Galaxy map, doesn't there? Yeah. I mean, it's, they're all in known systems, so it should be widely available to everybody. I mean, one, that's one of the quirks that I don't particularly like about the Galaxy map is when you're looking for, you know, a material trader or something like that. I mean, it should light up. Because I think it's based on ones that you've visited before, isn't it? It's ones that are known to your commander rather than, you know, a material trader, for instance, you know, you would imagine would be someone that everyone would know where they are you you know you, you need to go to this system whereas yeah about the I mean, only way gonna hide, you are going to hide things away there needs to be some sort of breadcrumb to help you find them at least yeah but i can't really understand why they hide stuff like that away because it's it's a service it's it's part of uh, um, what do most people do they go to somewhere like inara and say i'm in this system where is the nearest you know carrier administrator uh where is the nearest you know material trader i want you know I, you know whether it's uh raw or you know you again it comes down to this using external tools to find something that should be in the map in the first place it's no wonder that new players kind of like get confused Better sit down. Doing these carrier jumps remotely is quite nice. I'm, I'm actually uh, seeing if I can scrape together a bit of tritium for uh, dime bar at the moment. He seems as though he's getting better at um, mining, which is good. Slowly, slowly. I mean, I think the... he'd done 50 tons yesterday, which was a vast which improvement is... over the two that he did the day before. So I know. Yeah, so that's... But, uh, you know, it isn't easy mining, I don't think. I think it's one of the hardest uh, things you can actually do in, yeah, in the I, game. I, th I think, you know, if you're if you're doing it for the first time, there's quite a lot to get your head around, especially with the different types of mining now. But e even if you just start with the, the surface mining, you still got to remember you know, your prospect limpets, your collector limpets, and... You know, as a... If you... <laughs> It's all too easy to start with uh, a refinery that's not big enough. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, one of the things that I, I said yesterday in the stream was, you know, try and get the biggest you can, you know, because, you know, if you've just got one limpet collector, you know, going around collecting uh, a whole lot of stuff, yeah. you know, when, it, you know, it takes a hell of a long time for that limpet to collect everything, whereas if you've got three working... I don't know what's yeah. what is the maximum amount of limpets you can actually have working. Is it three or is it can it is it I'm, higher? I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm, I try and balance the um, number of limpets to the. Um, I I have know, the, three. The laser so that so, so that it's have, picking them up, picking things up as quickly as it's um, you know spawning them off the surface. I have three limpets work. You know, as collectors. So, but it'd be interesting. I'm, I'm sure I've, I've, I've seen I've some. I've definitely had more than that. But I think that's just down to the size of the refinery on board the, the Anaconda, and it seems to work pretty well.
I know Commander Shelter uh, N7 is looking to. Uh, they've got a, um, a Python miner, and De Commander was definitely looking for a, a bigger ship. That's one of the things they're going to do when they get to Colonia, because I recommended a, an Anaconda, but you know they might go for T9 or something maybe. Actually, I, I prefer a smaller ship because it's easier. Yeah, I think to some people do. Dime bar does, I think. Yeah. Well, it's easy to whip around the surface and use your abrasion blaster and things like that. Yeah. You know, the, the carrier spin, the the, uh, the asteroid spinning out of sight. So it's it's, it's uh, you know horses for courses, isn't it? It's whatever you get used to, whatever you want to do. Yeah, and I think I think it's great um, that commanders like you know all, you know some commanders like really small ships. It's, it adds a bit more diversity. I, th I think one of the, the good things about, you know, Odyssey has been it, it has encouraged commanders to use their smaller ships. I certainly uh, use smaller ships far more. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure a uh, Sidewinder is great for mining, though. No. Not bad for exploration, though. Oh, have you arrived? Have How long have you got now? Better stand up. There we go. Bit more light in this system by the look of it. Oh, yeah. That's quite. Have you changed your interior? Nope. No, it's the same old... I just think it's a nice warm glow coming in through the window, is it? Or... I, th I thought you had the uh, the, the white science theme inside. Is it just, that's just the lights off, isn't it, after, after it does the jump? Yeah, I just think it's... Uh, whether it's something to do with the, the lighting and there's a bit of a bit of a warm glow coming through the window. Yeah, um, so I think the, light, the lights have... Because that's not that white, is it? It's... It's sort of like orangey white. Mm. I mean, that's. I think that's supposed to be red, but it looks. I would check mine, but um, I can't because I'm <laughs> not in it. <laughs> as as Dimebar said, I'm having to do this journey twice. Once on his, now remotely. I mean, some of the parking positions that you end up with the carrier. I mean, I, I've jumped into a system before and thought, nah, don't like the view. I'll I'll jump the carrier again and burn a bit more tritium, but I, I might have a better view. And usually it works. It's. I do have an an idea of where I'm going to park the carrier when we arrive in um, in Colonia. Do you? In the. Yeah, no, you, How you do you pronounce that system name with Ed38 system name? I, I did. I did uh, explain it on uh, Discord. Oh, did you? I just got to go. Yeah, you ignored it. So, okay. it's as I said to you before. It's, it's named after um, the old community manager's dad, uh, and his initials were WNL. Right. So you, if you break it down, it's uh, W. Yeah. N. L. Right. And fast, it's WNL. WNL, right? Yeah, WNL. Right. At least I'm going to be saying it properly. <laughs> well, yeah, you wouldn't get your uh, your cup of tea and a biscuit otherwise. Yeah, they do a good bis do a good bicky, don't they? Ah, uh, so the um, restocking still doesn't seem to be working. Because didn't Ed Thirty Eight um, have a bit of a fight over that system? Wasn't someone trying to take over that, take over your system? A few uh, six months ago, something like that, a year ago. Yeah, there was there was a lot of conflict. Um, and they sort of managed to round up a number of people to come and help. I think they but, got uh, I got I think they got some support from some other groups, didn't they? Um, yeah. So the, the thing is, we, we were you know we're very very small really. We've only got. 38? A few a few active players. We haven't even got 38 active players. We've only got um, probably around about 12-ish. And so, you know, when if there's a if there's a fight, if there's uh, something going on, then uh, we haven't really got the numbers. I mean, it does have an interesting history, though. Your, you know, your uh, faction, your squadron thing. Doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have been before.
with the carrier because of course you know Hebridean Isles I actually got in Colonia so that's where I was when the update happened oh, I didn't realise that yeah yeah so she's she's heading home because of course I had to mine my way back to the bubble which was lots of fun by yourself not so bad if you i think that's one of the differences if you've got players on board and i think we to a certain extent we do have 24 hour operations i think there's commanders who are in totally different time zones to us and we kind of forget you know that it's that kind of game i, I just know that every time i uh, come back to discord phil's filled up another few screens worth of screenshots yeah i know it's, it's amazing prolific you know it's just i'm feeling um quite inadequate as a uh, explorer and photographer at the moment yeah i'm going to try and get my finger out tonight and see what i can find i am enjoying the expedition though phil says he's trying to be selective so i think that just shows how much he's finding then doesn't it He's rubbing it in now. He's saying he sounds found so much stuff. <laughs> I think I'll probably be able to set the route now. I knew there was something yeah, I was supposed to mine. be doing. I'm supposed to be jumping a carrier. <laughs> there we are. We're set in. He's... See, Phil says in chat that he's not a pro, but I think um, he's got up to speed very quickly. Oh, no. The... i tell you one thing, Phil. You are producing uh, some images that would, you know, Stellar screenshots and all that. I mean, I, I've entered some uh, in for stellar screenshots. I mean, I'm not really bothered about the uh, the ASP paint job. Um, I don't think I'd actually use it, but it's just because I'm a miserable sod. It would be nice if we could get um, some screenshots from the you know, the expedition featured on the stellar yes. screenshots. Yes, yeah. Yeah, I mean, one of the things we're going to have to do when we're in Colonia, like I say, we're going to be staying there a couple of weeks so that people get a nice amount of time in there because there's a, quite a bit to do in Colonia, even if you're just unlocking some engineers there and maybe establishing a uh, few ships there for future use because um, Colonia is great as a location for exploration trips further on you know out into the galaxy I mean that's what I basically did for the 15 18 months I was in Colonia because I, I only expected to be there sort of about six months and ended up spending uh, initially I was actually going to spend I had one Christmas there and I was going to spend uh, another Christmas in Colonia and then decided that I would I would start heading back and I got back for about October. How did your family react when you were told them that you were going to spend Christmas in Colonia? Uh, I don't think they actually missed me so <laughs> <laughs> my dog Luna was sort of like yeah whatever <laughs> I mean, there's, uh, I mean, there's actually a couple of uh, engineers that I've got to try and unlock when I get to Colonia, because of course there wasn't the suit and weapons engineers available last time I was there. So yeah, that's, that's that's something I want to try and unlock. I want to try and get some of that done if possible. Of course, 
I'm going to regret selling all my um, Odyssey materials to everybody, aren't I now? I went and bought some yesterday. Um... I tell you what's disappointing though is if we look at my uh, bar, it's not showing up any of the transactions at all. Yeah, it mustn't be working, surely. I I, I think there's still some issues there. It can't be working because I I went and bought some uh, bits and pieces off of you, and you you weren't even aware that anything had gone, and I literally emptied emptied you out the the first time I went shot there because it was. Yeah, it's just not but reporting the sales. You sales added in, uh, you added yeah. a whole lot of you sold me a whole lot of stuff, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that didn't appear either, so I think that's yet another issue at the moment. This is maybe the reason why update twelve is taking so long because it just. Well, it depends. I mean, all the a lot of the updates previously have been primarily focused around patching the game with small amounts of um, additional content. So we had the uh, the scorpion and we had fleet carrier interiors, but mainly it's been updates, isn't it? So I think you know, is up is the reason why we're waiting a little bit longer for update twelve because it's more content rich. I hope so, um, and I hope that content is widely distributed amongst amongst the player base. If you know what I mean, I hope there's a little bit for everybody. Um, I think it's going to be primarily Odyssey. I, I meant in the sense of you know there's something there for explorers, there's something there yeah. for traders, and there's something there for people who, who are doing combat. I think it's great to concentrate on combat. And combat's a lot of fun something uh, you know we're going to be doing more of in future but the thing is is you know again it comes down to that thing of if you are you know a commander who doesn't do combat it doesn't really make that much difference if they go and add you know something combat related well this is the part of the problem they've got though isn't it that every time they do something Two thirds of the player base go well. You haven't done anything for us. Yeah, because I suppose you know if you do something for explorers, you know a lot of the combat uh, commanders will yeah, just say, so, you know, no, well, what, what what's it for us? Like, you, know, you have, but, okay, we've just done this massive fix. Yeah, but you haven't fixed my little particular problem. You know, whereas you know a lot of the traders, you know, the space truckers will just go. You know, they don't really care. I've got a load to deliver. I think the if they can add some content, regardless of who it's for or uh, what it actually is, that does give the you know, content creators a, a, a something to play with and attract a bit more attention on social media and streams and YouTube, etc. Phil has said, by the way, what's the social space for Odyssey? Well, that must be the bar, surely, is it? What on on a carrier, Phil, or? You know, just okay. In what context did you hear that? Because I mean, it sounds as if it could be the the bar and the the, you know, the fleet carrier interiors. Out of station. I think it's. I think it's just the bar, isn't it? I think it's just. I think they're referring to just the the concourse in in, in its entirety, where people can you know you can meet other other commanders. I don't think it's a particular facility as such. It's just the fact that um, at a station on foot. Have you got Odyssey, Phil? I can't remember. Right, so it's um so when they talk about the social space, I think they're referring to just the the, the area where all of the services are are hosted off. So the the, the station concourse is like the hub area, um, and around there you have the sort of bar, the, the pioneer, apex, and all the other services. So I think they refer to that as a social space where other other commanders in your wing can wave at you and. Uh, 
so I, their remotes. I think basically Phil's in a similar sort of like situation to Dime Bar, where we right. need to do another one of these expeditions at some point, yeah. so that Phil can go out with his Odyssey commander and uh, yeah, meet up platform, in the bar. Platform and... limbo. It's all sort of like fragmented because I was thinking yesterday about how you were saying about you know even on PC, Horizons commanders don't, and it, you know don't appear. To Odyssey commanders, do they in the instance? No, they're they're completely separate. So Galaxies. again, you know, if we is if you've got fifty commanders, you know, on board a fleet carrier, you're an Odyssey commander. They're just a uh, they're all Horizons commanders. You know, you're going to have absolutely no idea that they're on board. No, they might as well be invisible. It's like all separated out. I mean, it, I think one of the things that would have been absolutely fantastic is to have cross-play across all of the platforms, um, but, you know, just wasn't meant to be, I suppose. But that was only ever going to happen. I, I think there were some issues getting the um, console cross-play working anyway, but regardless, it was only ever going to happen once they had got the new planetary tech onto all the different instances, all the different uh, platforms. So I still wonder what's going to happen, or whether it's still on the cards, uh, moving the planetary tech into Horizons players. I'll just wave yeah. to Commander Smiley. <laughs> so, Phil, yeah, I, th I think what they're referring to is the area within the stations that um, you, can, you can go to get missions, talk to other people, talk to other NPCs, and that hosts all the relative, relative, you know, relevant services. But I think you know, when, we, when we finally get to our destination, we can we can show you that. Unless you've already already seen it on one of the one of the videos somewhere. I mean, it says, I think actually with carriers, it actually says there's a concourse, which there isn't really, is there? The concourses are on the stations. It's just, I think, FDEV's way of saying, you know, it's somewhere that a commander can walk around. Yeah, so I think they, they, they use the phrase concourse to refer to that sort of hub area that all your services hang off. But it's not a concourse in, uh, you know, I mean, actually, the bar area of the carrier, I, I, I would have liked to have seen something maybe a bit more like... I love the outposts, you know, the... The outposts... Um, you know where you can only land a medium ship. Is it, I can't remember. Is it? Are they outposts? Uh, yeah, I know. I, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know what you mean. But I quite like the layout of those stations. Um, you know where you sort of like come out of the 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 lift elevator and then you basically go down into the the area where you know the bar is. And I quite like quite like that layout. Where the where the bar it was very atmospheric. Yeah, I know, I know and, the ones you mean. And I think, I mean, I saw your shot today with the the lighting on Commander Dime bars, which I think is the default uh, interior, yeah, he, he and it looks great. It. The problem the problem that I've got with this this research one is it's too bright. Um, the I think you know I like the glow from the monitors. Uh, some areas of light and dark and things like that. It, it's, it's it's like you said. It's a bit clinical. Looking. Yeah. But you know, again, it's a it's a theme, isn't it? Some people will like it. Some people won't. True, and it's free, which yeah. people will love. Uh, Phil Phil is absolutely right about the uh, the narcolepsy breaking out uh, across all the NPCs. I do think that in the next update, one of the things they will change is the activity level of NPCs. I think some of those people who are sleeping will be waking up. I think it's just that they've added more seats, haven't it? And the seats get um, populated by, well, you know, the they've, NPCs. They've added, they've, and... they've added the, uh, more NPCs into these areas. I, I must admit result, that it does look good. It does look yeah, good as, now. As a feels... result, there's a greater proportion of them asleep. It, it, it does feel more like a, an active station there. Um... 
I mean, I, th I would. I, th I think I would like to have to see a few more different activities that the NPCs were doing. I mean, do you think that commanders will be able to go and refuel? That there will be booths and things where you can go and refuel your ship uh, in the same way, you know, that you can go along and cash in your combat vouchers and everything for um, ground combat. Do you think you'll be able to go along and? There'll be a, a repair section in a station, and there'll be some guy behind there and say, "Like, I want my ship repaired." So you can literally I, do everything on foot. I, I, I don't think so. I think that they would just do that on a um, on a menu on the on the it, panel. It, well, it seems as though it's it's doubling up, isn't it? Really, I suppose. You know, it's this idea that you know, if you're in your ship and you're repairing your ship, then it's. Prioritising resources and all that. I, su I suspect that we'll get some gameplay related um, updates next, hopefully. How long we got? 10 minutes yet? Well, I'm just out on the final minutes of uh, countdown. The engines are starting to wind up, so. Oh, blind bars appeared in chat. Hello, Commander. You had an early start. How's go. it going? I, I, having just, um, you know, you, you've already, <laughs> you've, you've already done your jumps, so you know exactly what we're going through. I mean, to a certain extent, you know, for for streaming, you know, carrier jumping is like watching paint dry, really, isn't it? It's not the most exciting thing. I suppose the, the nice thing is that it's, it's very low intensity as far as uh, you know, you're concerned. So and that, uh, and, and commanders. Can actually, sort of, can actually chat. And commanders can sort of like log in, can't they? And, you know, see progress and everything. They, they know how far along the route. Uh, hey, they might even stay if we're actually saying something interesting. Yeah, I don't know why you got the 30 minute carrier jump problem. I don't know whether that was just because someone else or other people were jumping around you at the time. I don't know. That's, that's a bit of a weird one. Nice bright star here by the look of it. Yes, Bill, you uh, <laughs> definitely need to. Uh, have some sort of bit more ship entertainment, shipboard entertainment, don't you? If you're stuck in your ship on a Horizons or console instance. So you're saying that because it's so boring sat in your ship waiting for the carriers to jump that this stream is looking good. So it is a good option. <laughs> What for putting people to sleep? Well, you know, it's... giving people giving people something to do. Fall asleep and then the commander wakes at the other end. and We've arrived, you know, to catch up on your sleep and also travel at the same time. But are you saying that we are the elite dangerous equivalent of a, of a stasis machine? <laughs> I actually, I d considering some streams that I've seen about Elite Dangerous, I don't think we do too bad a job. <laughs> you know, I mean, we're not pro streamers. With, I mean, the last thing I would want to be, I think, is a pro streamer. It looks a lot of hard work. 
Yeah, I think I think you're right. I um, when I got up this morning, I checked um, you know where I was. I found out I was on Dimebar's carrier. I thought, oh, I'll, I'll just uh, pop a stream open and just sort of pick one from random on on Twitch. And yeah, so early in the morning, the last thing you need is sort of um, hardcore rock, uh, full volume. <laughs> Pretty first coffee of the morning. That was I, a bit I, of just, I just find some streams very intense to watch. There's a lot going on. They've got music. They're talking, uh, and just sometimes it's just overwhelming. Um, I think I think there's definitely a different. There's definitely streams where people go along to spend time with the streamer, and that the activity they're doing, the game they're doing, is, is sort of secondary. And there's other streams where it's more about the game and less about the streamer, and it's a bit more, there's a bit more sort of gameplay content, if you like. I mean, one of the things I did find amusing about the Odyssey situation was the amount of uh, streamers uh, who, you know, content creators who said, you know, that's it, leaving the game, bye, and then sort of like quietly crept back a few months later, as though nothing had happened, you know content creators you know a month ago is you know, distant past oh, but i think a bit of an outrage and a bit of drama gets gets some views oh they it? were certainly doing that they you know they they get a, a a can of petrol and just chuck it on the flames don't they because they know that it's going to drive you know people to their their channels um i think that's one of the problems that a lot of game developers have now is Sometimes it's not about the state of the game. It's just that people just want to stick the boot in because they know that they're going to get new followers and, you know... It, it must be depressing to, to, to having spent, sort of, you know, years writing a game and then the first video you see on YouTube is titled Everything Wrong With. Yeah, and you still come up with, you know, things like that. You know, and it's often done by people who, you know, obviously... If you're making constructive criticism about the game, which we've done, you know, on these streams, we've said about the problems that carriers have got and, you know, that the game has got, FDev have got, you know, things like communication, etc. But I think some people just go well over the top because they know that there's going to be an emotional response. And largely, um, content creators um, sort of like follow what their audience thinks you know most most people follow streamers that you know interest them or, or think on a similar sort of like wavelength you know you're not going to follow someone who you know you're not going to follow commander hatch someone who does star citizen well apart from me occasionally um so you know you've got to have an interest in the first place but you've also got to i mean i'm not a big fan of yamix so you know, mainly because I think he actually sticks a boot in and then wonders why he doesn't get a free copy of the game off of FDev. Well, I think one, one of the problems is that if you're looking to, to grow your, your, you know, your channel or your, your um, YouTube or whatever, you're going to be looking at the metrics to see what works, what gets you the views. And that's going to reinforce bad behaviours because, as we know, the more contentious the content, the more engagement you're going to get the more uh, attention and i think this and is so also it, it's, it's a... this Go also on. encourages the the like you were saying about one of the reasons why fdev keeps so quiet is because they release some information out uh and the community sort of like run with it i mean one of my biggest problems with the elite dangerous community is often uh the people who are referring to the community just mean the content creation community they don't mean the commander who it might have just a, a Twitter feed and might just contribute occasionally. They're talking about, you know, those commanders who regularly post videos about things. It's very easy to sit within your own little bubble with uh, yeah. the people you regularly play with and the, the videos you normally look at and whatever and, and forget that there's quite a large group of people out there who are doing something totally different. I mean, you know, Flight Assist podcast is great, but they do have a tendency to go for streamers. Yeah, but they're going to go with, go with people they know. Yeah. But I, w I would have liked it if they'd have just gone a bit broader. 
That's all I'm saying. Well, I think I think they will have to at some point because they'll run out of streamers. <laughs> you know, I mean, we've been in game seven and a half years, and I've never been asked on live radio. But there's a reason for that, though, Richard. Why? I'm rubbish. I won't. I won't, I won't say it in public. <laughs> I, I did notice that uh, that uh, Phil is is fed obviously fed up with us because he's 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 now pleading with Dimebar to start streaming. I I do believe that Commander Dimebar should start streaming because um, you know he's just I mean hopefully I'll be able to get him into my stream on the Discord like we we had yesterday. It's a lot easier when there's three of you talking, you know, with people coming oh, up with it's ideas. It's quite nice because there was there were you moments You bounce off of where, each other, don't you, with conversation. Where, where you, and, you and Dimebar could just continue to talk while I went off and uh, attended to some, you know, yes, family I did. issue or whatever. I did notice that... Yeah, so you're basically getting our services for free, aren't you? Yeah, you're doing my stream for me. <laughs> Right, so what what am I doing? Uh, are we ready to jump yet? Yeah, because I mean, uh, that's, uh, I mean, going back to you know what we're saying. I mean, one of the things I liked about the EliteCommanders.com website, where they're uh, interested in hearing from commanders, because um, I went and put my profile on there because uh, I just I just liked the way that they were interested. They wanted to, you know, anybody. They said in their tweet, anybody can. So if you go along to EliteCommanders.com, you can leave your profile there. They've got a... I will add it to chat. Uh, got to find it first. Yeah, Phil makes a good point that, you know, it's, it's definitely easy to succumb to hatred for what others want rather than, um, you know, what, what you want to do. Just because you're so focused on, you know, you don't want to lose followers. You want to sort of manage your metrics, and I think, I think that's why a lot of streamers sort of will burn out a little bit because they are spending so much time trying to keep other people happy that they forget that they're really, you know, they're, they're doing I, it for fun, aren't they? I think one of the things with content creators is is a lot of people who watch them um, don't realise that basically the content creator is a business. And because they are a business, they're wanting to try and make money out of it. The the game is a secondary consideration. The first consideration is their channel. And if that means them sacrificing, you know, a game that they might have loved at the beginning, but, you know, they, they don't like the way that the development's gone, they will sacrifice that game in a heartbeat if, it, if they think that they can gain another 5,000 subscribers whatever it is that they're after because they can Probably. always move on to something else or like i said earlier you know come back at a later date and and kind of like the past didn't happen you know everything's moving at such speed these days whether it's social media uh television news whatever it is you know six months ago is is ancient history and those uh content creators can just come back creep back a little bit later and as though nothing happened you know once the game is is fixed again hey i'm back yeah so i think i think the one thing we need to worry about is that um if we do convince dime bar to start streaming we're going to end up that he's going to be ear licking in a bikini while standing in a hot tub well, thank you for that image yeah well he mentioned it first i tried to find that link for where is it I mean, for, for me, the streams that I really like are the ones where somebody is really passionate about what they're doing. And this goes for YouTube videos as well. If, if someone is really enjoying what they're doing, it doesn't really matter so much whether it's something that, that you particularly like. Just that, uh, you know, enthusiasm is quite nice and refreshing sometimes. So there's a link for yeah. Elite Commanders. So, yeah, Phil, um, as long as he puts the green screen in front of him, then that's fine. Uh, it, it, it is. It's, it's, um, I mean, uh, the hypocrisy of, of, you know, some content creators is just amazing. But, you know, 
they're, 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 they, they are willing to sacrifice, you know, the game to a certain extent and cause damage to that game because, of course, you know, they, they are influential with a lot of people. Some people won't actually dive into the game because some content creator has said, you know, this game's rubbish. It's the reason why, you know, a lot of, of you know, the community managers sort of like, you know, look after those people who have channels that are influential. I mean, I can think of a couple of names, you know, straight off that, you know, if they decided to put the boot in, would have quite an effect on uh, Elite Dangerous. Commander Burr, for yeah. instance. Well, you know, look at the opposite. Not that I would picture. expect him to, because Commander Burr's, you know, a really nice commander, I, very level-headed, does a great I, I, job. I, I, I do like Commander Burr. I think even even with some of the early Odyssey videos, he was very calm about it. It was very fair, considered. yeah. Yeah. Um, and, it, it, and it must have been tough for him. Um, but, you know, if Commander Burr went evil and suddenly turned around and said, you know, Elite Dangerous, you know, Odyssey, rubbish, not going anywhere, dead game, they would lose, they would lose people. You know, they would, they would lose commanders. But at the end of the day, Commander Burr actually, you know, really loves the game, wants to see the game uh, succeed. I mean, his recent video where he's saying about... It's sort of like, um, it's, it's, he wasn't exactly direct, but he was certainly hinting at, you know, that, hey, FDev, come on, start talking a bit more. Yeah, there was a certain amount of frustration there, but again, that was, it was very, you know, restrained. I, I think the, the thing he is struggling with now is coming up with more uh, euphemisms for Thargoid, so. Terra tomatoes, that's mine. <laughs> you can borrow that. I don't know, the tomato's a fruit though, isn't it? So that really doesn't make very much sense. It doesn't make any sense. Nothing makes any sense. <laughs> I've got another five minutes for my jump. Six minutes 30 here. No, I mean, the, the other one is, of course, Commander Wutherspoon, who is, you know, a fantastic asset to the community. I think it's a shame that the the Galnet stuff he does just doesn't get more visibility. He has I mean, he's, passed. He's been, sl he's been slogging away for I don't know how long since Year Dot doing all the Galnet stuff. But again, he just it, doesn't seem to get the views. He's another another commander that sort of like tried to make the best of a bad situation. Where I mean, I used to have a Twitter feed that I had for the Galnet news. It basically just used to work off the RSS feed, and then uh, Frontier decided that they would cut that feed so I just basically closed the channel but I tried to uh, cover you know what was in Galnet but also what the community was doing as much as possible um, so if anybody was doing an expedition I would retweet it on that channel um, but you know I mean when there was the big outage of uh, Galnet you know, uh, prior to Odyssey arriving, um, it must have been really tough for Commander Witherspoon to come up with things. I mean, fortunately, I think he just used to report what the community was up to. And there was a bit of activity, quite a bit of activity with the community still, but... Yeah, the Galnet, the Galnet uh, blackout was very difficult for a lot of people. And no CGs, of course, during that... Oh, yeah. period either which yeah. you know didn't help things very much that always chance... makes me laugh when people sort of complain that um, oh it's a dead game they you know not having lived through the galnet and cg dearth you know lack of that we had yeah, uh, I think that's it. Uh, well, it's something that always happens when something goes wrong, don't they? And it's not just Delete Dangerous that they do it with. I mean, uh, uh, Star Citizen, if it runs into troubles with... They do... Sometimes they have a, a, a tendency to shoot themselves in the foot about Imperium games when they're doing things. 
they actually ended because one of the things that star citizen had was um i mean they still do to a certain extent but they've changed the way that they do it they they had a road map where they yeah. were going to say about you know what was going to be happening with the game but it was a bit like elite dangerous um it was sort of the opposite of the way that frontier do stuff where they don't say anything about what's coming up cloud imperium used to be you say well right we hope to be able to do this with patch 3.14 15 16 whatever it was but people would take it literally so when of course well, something was not, not, not from just literally patch, they'll, they'll take it as a cast iron promise yes. that it will be delivered on this point you know well, rather than looking at it as a well this this is the road ahead as we see it from here well earlier in the year january basically cloud imperium had a bit of a tantrum and, and said, you know, we are going to get, we are changing so that we are going to basically only talk about the next update. And it's all the fault of the community. That was literally, it was one of those emails that was uh, messages to the community that was sort of typed out that should never have been sent. But someone did actually send it. <laughs> um, and, and everybody was sort of like raised our brows as though to say, you know, oh, what's going on here? So... It's interesting, you know, that, you know, if you're a Star Citizen fan, you've got, you know, a company that's wanting to try and tell people, you know, what's going on and the community sort of like running away with itself. And then you've got the Elite Dangerous community side as well, where we don't, often we don't get told what's going on. Um, and they kind of run away with themselves as well. It's sort of like a middle ground that we need to inhabit, I think. Yeah, I think that you know when you don't have enough information, people will make it up, won't they? They'll, they'll sort of fill in the gaps. And, and again, it, it, to... again, I think some of this is to do with, I mean, not having too much uh, against content creators because there's some really good ones, but certainly some of them like the idea of having something that they think might come true, as though it's a, a sort of like an exclusive, even though they don't know. Yeah, and I think, you know, it's... <sighs> you end up sort of focusing on a lot of, you know, things that could have been, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, the, the the forums is a, a place that I don't go to very often, the Elite Dangerous forums. I don't even have an account there, actually. Or I've certainly never left anything on the forum. I, I do wonder what people think of the forum, especially sort of new players. I don't know. Phil, have you, have you um, what was your impression of the forums when you when you first? Have you ever actually been to the forums, the Elite Dangerous forums? Definitely interested to find out um, how many people have been put off the game because of the <laughs> some of the, the things that happen in the forums. Oh, Dime Bar's going. Bye! I think he's already gone. Well, we've known that for ages, but you know. Yeah, so Phil's never been to the forums, and it's probably oh, looking. Yeah, looking. Not, look not not recommended, Phil. I mean, it does have some useful things in there. There's plenty of commanders, you know, posting things that are quite useful, but uh, a lot of it is just a whinge fest, for the want of a better word. Um, there's a lot of angry people on there, isn't there? Yeah, so I think whenever there's a big release that um, has a few problems, there's always a few open letters being written. That makes me laugh. And a lot of people are announcing that they're quitting the game. Which is a lot of absurd. abuse. You know, the amount of commanders. Yeah. Uh, I Last time I went on there, I think it was uh, Arf basically saying, you know, anybody says anything like this, you will get a ban and we'll even ban your account. Because, you know, they were, they were basically, you know, saying that the community team were like liars and, uh, I mean, there's all sorts of like really hideous accusations on there. It's just a hive of scum and villainy, it really is. With some really good stuff in there, it's just finding the good stuff. Well, the problem was that you, when it came to update day, you wanted to go onto the forums to find the patch notes. Which is probably about the only time I ever actually use it, you know, it's, um, is if there's a link, you know, that uh, Frontier put up and say, you know, well, here are the patch notes. That'll be about the only time I ever actually go to the 
forum and occasionally I'll just have a look around and just go, no, it hasn't improved. But I have noticed that they've started putting the patch notes onto the website now. Yeah, which is a lot better. Well, I think the, the benefit there is it does create that additional visibility so people outside of the game, outside of the forums, can see that the game is still getting updates. Yeah, because the website hadn't changed for quite a while. Was it about 12 months? You yeah, know, So it's very stagnant. I, I just... You know, this is one of the things I couldn't really understand about them sort of like hiding the news away and getting rid of the RSS feed because, you know, that would, that would be search, be able to be used by people. I mean, it, I was using it and then they decided that they were going to change things. I mean, well, I know piece, some people get rid of things like the um, syndication of the content from their own websites because they want people to come to the website. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I start, that is an argument. Um, yeah, but then, then of course, you have to make it worthwhile, don't you? Yeah. By having good stuff on the website that's worth visiting. Two minutes 30 till the next commencement of the next jump. Uh, I need to get rid of some bookmarks so I know exactly. Have you maxed out your bookmarks yet? No, I haven't. Um,. Because I'm being very careful with mine. I mean, it's I've got bookmarks, as you can see, all over the galaxy. So, yeah, it's... I think it's 200 now, is it? Bookmarks? I don't know. I, I, I just, I'm very bad at maintaining them. I've got bookmarks. I do not know why they're there anymore. Oh, no, no. I've got those as well, Commander. I I won't worry about that. It's just, you know, I think it's at the moment you just don't... Um, about the only time I ever actually mark them is if it's good mining sort of like areas where I'll say, you know, low temperature diamonds, things like that. But if it's... But sometimes I'll just mark a, a place because it's interesting and then a couple of months later I'll go back and think, why has that got a bookmark? Yeah. What, one of the things I do, Phil, is, is try and put some you know initials or something at the beginning of the bookmark so i know what sort of category it's in whether it's um you know resources materials or you know, yeah so i mean with other of interest. i mean with with my mining bookmarks you know so there's low temperature diamonds there bltd void opals vo um but the know. problem is i always forget the abbreviations i've used <laughs> <laughs> well that's the other but danger isn't it i am going to take after take a i don't know a year out from the game to just go through and just visit all my bookmarks one by one and check them out. Why, why did I bookmark this? <laughs> Three jumps to go. Because the thing is, you always add bookmarks around the thing that's important to you at the time, don't you? So if you're, if you're grinding for materials or you know, you're, you're doing power play or whatever it is, you'll get a whole load of stuff added to your, your, your bookmarks that, you know, a few months later down the road. Some some of my bookmarks go go back years, um, you know, to early exploration and things like that. So there, there are areas of space that I, I've not been back to since, you know... I mean, in some cases, probably five, six years ago. So, so Phil's used a, a, a numerical system. So is, is that... Have you actually got a book somewhere or a you know a notepad or something? Phil with... said he wasn't a pro. He's totally showing us up. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, so is it like you've got the number in your, of your bookmark in your galaxy map and then you've got a big reference document. The other commander's saying, hey, give the carrier control to that guy. He's organised. It wouldn't surprise me if Phil has got multiple screenshots for every single bookmark as well. You think he's building a case against us? I think so. Got the video footage. Don't go with these idiots. Quite a nice lit system. And the stars are building nicely. Or suit. <laughs> a, law a lawsuit. <laughs> I was promised this on this expedition and they just didn't deliver. Oh, already submitted. I think we're in trouble. Commander Hatch. 
Is there an it's all dime bar's fault? Colonia? It's all dime bar's fault. Yeah, blame him. <laughs> oh, that so totally undercover. makes sense. It must be all my fault then for all of the carrier things that I've been saying. I want this and I want that, and it's just right. Yeah, if you don't start writing these down, then then we're not going to take you seriously anymore. There is no way that they're going to introduce half. The... I I would be surprised if they had a message board. The one thing that scares me slightly is and even commander bird that we mentioned earlier has mentioned this in his video is frontier you know if they do have a bit of a tendency to sort of introduce something and then go on to the next thing and not sort of like sort the issues out that that um system has and i'm just slightly worried that you know they just sort of introduce and say hey you know you've got carrier interiors um you don't need a message board you don't need you know I don't, I don't think it's even that, is it? It's just they, they just sort of move on to the next thing. And, it, it, you know, power play is a good example. There's a lot of, lot of feedback about what needs to happen to make it you know, more engaging and more Have interesting. Have they actually done that. anything with power play recently? <laughs> no. So a lot of the issues, because I know that the power play um, community and everything, you know, there's a lot of commanders who are into power play and yeah. weren't particularly happy with the system, were they? So, um, do you remember Sandy Smarco? Yeah. So he produced a document which was um, effectively the changes that he wanted to make to PowerPlay because PowerPlay was was really his thing. Yeah. Um, so he had like a document which sort of outlined all the changes. This is based on sort of community involvement and how things have been working. So he had like a bit of a, you know, if we could do it, this is what I would be thinking of doing. And there's a lot of discussion around it. And of course, then he left um elite dangerous and um it's all sort of ground to a halt a bit with nothing's ever happened yeah i to a um, certain extent i i just wonder whether fdev are a bit scared of diving into the power play system it's kind of like working sort of the way that they want it and it's like we don't really want to you know touch it i mean i i said on a stream you know previously about how the whole reason why there's not that much tritium in colonia is because they were messing around with the there was there was too much trading in low temperature diamonds wasn't there the, there was yes. a, a mining yeah. and they went and altered that and the knock-on effect of that was the amount of tritium available just dropped through the floor um because initially when carriers were added to the game i say i was out in colonia and refueling the carrier was no problem at all you know there was a few refining systems, refinery systems uh, nearby that you could uh, easily get tritium at in the quantities that you wanted. That all dried up overnight just as soon as they made those changes. And it, it, I got the impression, uh, just an impression could be totally wrong, but it, it just that it was such uh, a nightmare to try and sort that situation out where they could get tritium back that they just thought that we'll we'll leave it for the time being and maybe deal with it later possibly we'll see how the community get on with it well balancing in things a bit of a nightmare isn't it it's such a complicated beast elite dangerous and, it, and i think whenever you've got something that is perceived to be to have made life more difficult that's really difficult as well so, you know, I can see that things from a game pay balance point of view, you might not want people to achieve things quite as quickly. But then because people have done that in the past, that expectation that it should be that easy is. Um, is difficult but, I mean, that's, I mean, you could argue, though, that, I mean, uh, for a new commander, making money was far easier than making money when we started playing the game, when the game went live, you know, December the 14th, 2014. Here we go. Back, back to the hole when we were a lad. <laughs> you know, I, I think Life commanders... used to be so much harder. I mean, you know, the fact that Commander Dimebar was able to get a carrier in the space of time, uh, I think it took him about four, maybe five months. I'll have to ask him next time he's on. You know, he did graft for it, but he was able to find, you know, the right sort of information to be able to maximise his earning potential in-game. 
uh, doing his booze cruises, for instance. Yeah. That. I think the, the two things. One is the you know obviously the game has changed, but also the information that's now available online. You know, yeah, find, you can, it's easier you know, to find, find, isn't it? There's Discord, yeah. there's you know uh, Twitter, there's even the forums to a certain extent um, have information that you know if you if if you are dedicated and you want to get somewhere, you want to get you know a fleet carrier, you want to get an anaconda, something like that, you know. There's the information out there for you to be able to get it quickly. Yeah. I mean, the thing that, that you kind of lose is whenever you sort of look at some of these, you know, make credits fast, get get to the uh, get your Corvette within you know two days or whatever. Um, I think you miss out on a lot. You miss out on all the small ships and that experience. Yeah, I mean, uh, I th I think. Like, like I say, uh, one of the, the things, great things about Odyssey is those new ships sort of like have a role again, which is, you know, refreshing. It's it's great to be able to get into a uh, a Cobra and actually, I used to fly a Cobra quite a bit before Odyssey, but, you know, some of the smaller ships, you know, the fighters actually have a purpose now, whether it's going down to find biologicals or just well, going, going down on uh, close to a, an outpost that is in a rocky sort of area where you couldn't land a ship any bigger than a fighter. I think the thing, the thing you forget is that when you start playing and you're in the small ships, your your combat rank is low. Is, is you're starting at it from the start, and so the game is you know scaled to that. So the experience you get is not the same as as you get when you're fully elite. Mm. I mean, Commander Dimebar was complaining the other day about how elite anacondas are coming after him. Uh, now just because he's a, a elite commander so <laughs> yeah um, you know, like, but, but the, that you the, know the i'm afraid point of view. that i'm afraid that comes with the territory sadly yeah. although it's like i said in some uh respect it would be easier uh it would be better and maybe tougher for some commanders in larger ships if it was like two or three small ships coming after you um in a cutter that would be an interesting battle because you know cutters do not turn well um you've got to really rely on uh you know turret, turreted lasers and things to be able to sort of like deal with a lot of ships right but i'm that's... gonna quickly quickly dash and get myself another drink i'll be, okay. I'll be back in a second Good old Donovan. That's not too bad, Phil, that amount of money. I mean, have, have you know, have you managed to get what you want so far out the out the game, you know, the ships that you want or just not really, you know, have you found what you what you need and it's Yeah, so you made your made your your billion and then just like bought some ships and things. Cuz I have quite a lot of money locked up in ships. Like I say I've got about 152 ships in my fleet, which is absolutely mad. Um oh, I need to go to the map. 
again. I think altogether my total assets is a, are around about 21, 22 billion, something like that. Uh, but the vast majority of it's tied up either in a fleet carrier or the ships that I've got. And we go to the navigation section. The head back to the bubble again. I have actually cut down the number of uh, s systems that I've got ships in. I, I decided to sort of like streamline. So a good example of that is Avalon, which is sort of I ha I've set up sort of like bases in each sort of like area of space. So there's a system that is my base of operations in Imperial space uh, and Federation space. And the main one is Alioth up here. Uh, where's the ship list? There. So there's 15 ships there, including... Uh, da, 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 da. They're the ones that are on board the carrier. Oh, I've just been escorted back to my seat. But yeah, that's, I've sort of like cut down the amount of systems because I, I think that was just a, a hang-up of the previous system before fleet carriers arrived um, where I can take everything. I've got 40 ships on board this carrier. Yeah, it's just a base of operations now that I can move around. So you've not gone after military ranks, Phil, then, or anything like that? Which is like Commander Hatch said yesterday. I mean, to be honest, the military ranks, apart from giving you access to other ships, uh, like the Cutter and the Clipper and uh, the Corvette, things like that, the military ranks don't actually mean very much in Elite Dangerous at the moment. Hopefully that will be fleshed out at some point, but it's another one of those maybe it might be fleshed out. Um, it would be nice to if they did. So you could actually have a military career in the game. Commander Hatch would be thrilled by that. Bit of a fed head. Petty officer and Baron. Is Baron high enough for the clipper? I can't remember. I think it is, isn't it? Is Baron... It's Duke for the Cutter, isn't it? I'm sure it's Duke. Because it goes downhill after that. I, I, I mean, I always thought the Imperial ranks were a bit badly worded. I mean, King, it doesn't make any sense, really, does it? I mean, to be honest, I mean, the only reason why I went after Imperial ranks is because uh, I, I got my Imperial ranks before the Federation ones because I wanted a cutter before the Corvette uh, and I think a lot of it was just so that I got access to a ship that I th I thought might be useful which I suppose is what a lot of commanders do it for you know they might think that a Corvette will be handy for combat and um But, you know, I went for the Imperial ranks first and uh, managed to get the Cutter, which I would regard as my main ship. Certainly the flagship of my fleet, I would say. But I have been flying it less. I always used to be in a, in a Cutter and now... I think the first time I've been in it for ages was was last night when I was uh, shipping a bit of tritium about. Is that your cutter with my paint all over it? No, that was a clipper. That was a clipper, was it? Yeah, that was a you clipper, a yeah. That's, that's your combat clipper. That's my combat clipper, which is... Uh, I don't think it's that one, because I think that one's at Avalon. I've got about three. Oh, I need to get a ship kit for that. Away. 
I do need to get the ship kit for the uh, Imperial Clipper because it's it does make it look quite quite cool. I mean, one of the ships that I would like to see is an Imperial Explorer. Yeah, that's that's the big gap, isn't it? Uh, I think there's a few gaps that need filling ship-wise. Uh, I mean, I wonder whether a Type Eight will ever turn up. Um, what what would be a Type Eight then? What's what's the gap that's filling? Yeah, that's true. Because I mean, really, it's sort of like with a Type Nine and Type Ten, there's sort of like filled that gap for commanders, you know, if they're wanting something big. I mean, I, I I didn't like the Type 10 that much, but I mean, there's a CG going now. It's my ship of choice because it's just the amount of stuff that it can carry. It just means that it can deliver the maximum amount of stuff for the minimal amount of effort, which is really what CGs are all about at the end of the day. But does the Type 10 have more cargo space than the Type 9? Yeah. Um. I mean, a Type 8 could be... Maybe another medium-sized cargo ship to compete with the Type 7. Maybe something a bit more meaty, you know, better protected. I don't know, the Type 8 could be an exploration ship for Lacon, another... Or combat ship. I'm not sure. Assuming... I'm not sure why we haven't why we haven't had the Panther Clipper yet. I mean, it's a, it's appeared in official um, you know, F Dev. Um, well, it, it even yeah, it even appears in when you're hiring crew, and you know the crew member will say, you know, I was navigation officer on board a Panther Clipper yeah, LX. I, it's, um, one, it, it's one thing to appear in in flavor text on a crew member, but when you actually see, you know, the, the a small version of it in one of the mock-ups in one of the, you know... Uh, well, and it's been knocking around pictures. for years, hasn't it? It's been knocking yeah. around for years, that mock-up. Um, it makes you wonder whether they, they built it, they tried it, and they found that there was a problem with it being so big. Maybe it couldn't get through the slot. I mean, maybe yeah. maybe that is something... But then again, I would turn around and say, well, right, folks, you can have the Panther, but... The problem is, is it's only surface to surface. You can't dock anywhere yeah. in space with it. Well, in the original Elite, you had the transport ships which only went from surface to the uh, stations. They ne you never saw them in space. Unless you could introduce some sort of like other docking system so that, you know, at outposts and stations. I was thinking more outposts, actually, where, you know, there's some sort of like docking. You don't well, land you, on you, a platform, you just dock with the... Yeah. And there's a tube... You've got, you've You've got enough mega ships and things these days. That yeah. Would be another option. Yeah. But actually, right, getting through I... the slot is, you know, is another. Yeah. How's my countdown doing? Thirty-two seconds. Right. That's... Good. Two to go. So two to go, isn't it? Yep. No. I can't jump yet because the cooldown hasn't finished. There's still 25 seconds to run. <laughs> it's so annoying. No matter what the cooldown is, you always you always end up getting the, you know going into the menu with some to spare, don't you? It's... it's like you were saying, it just needs sort of like blanking out until the cooldown has finished, and then you know it can light up again that button. Just to make it easier. It's See what they need. What they need is they need us to be playing Elite Dangerous in their offices, whinging at them. <laughs> well, we just need to be paid people, paid commanders, playing the game, just providing some ideas for them. Because you know, we'd be great at that. Forty grand a you're year. Gonna, you're yeah. going to put a gameplay consultant on your business card. Well, that's it. Consulting commanders. That's what you know. What, you know what happened though, don't you? You'll come up with all their ideas. You'll persuade FDF to listen to what you say. They'll they'll implement everything you've you've been mentioning, and then you will be absolutely annihilated. 
because the next the update will come out in five years time yeah well no because the next update will come out and all the things that you've suggested that would be a good idea other people will be going hate this <laughs> it's terrible it's the worst thing that's ever happened to the game well that's it i mean uh, i mean it, you must have to be made of tough stuff to be a developer at fdev um, I mean, maybe they just don't read their own press, if you know what I, I mean. I, 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 it's not just FDEV, it's, it's, it's all game development. You know, you, you, you can, you're, you're basically slogging away on something. I'm sure it's in other industries as well, you know. You could be slogging away on something. You know, thinking of Phil, you could be slogging away on, a, on an album or something. Um, thinking, yeah, I've put my heart and soul into this. This is as good as I can do it. Yeah, um, and then someone does a review saying, you know, Phil ought to give up, he's rubbish. Even Phil yeah. Collins is better, you know. Yeah, he's it's sold out. <laughs> Which is actually not because uh, I am a bit of a Genesis fan. It's the reason why Genesis Jarvis is my deck officer. So that's not being fair to Phil Collins, but you know what I mean. Yeah, but the, th the thing is, people, you know, the the reaction you get from strangers. You think, oh, it shouldn't really affect me, but it does, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, of course. It, I mean, it's, it's bound to. Yeah, people love it when, you know, they, I mean, I, I know this, you know, people, you know, will say, oh, I really love the work. Um, and, but, you know, it, it must be terrible for, I mean, you know, the people working on Odyssey, you know, when it, when it first released, I mean, just seeing the reaction of the community must have been, I, I think I would have just buried myself away and just said, right, I'm, I'm doing the nine to five in the office. Uh, and I, I, it's, I'll get all of the information from the community team, but I'm not actually going to take a look at what people are saying myself. Cause I, I, I think it, you know, especially the way that some commanders sort of like reacted, but well, I'm going to, I'm not even going to say the call them commanders because I don't think they were with some of the ridiculous stuff that they were coming out with. They were just wanting to stick the boot in again, like we were saying. I, I think it. I think it's really good when you when you we get some of the developers on the streams. I think um, it's always really insightful. And I think it also creates a, a bit more of a human connection between the community and the individual developers, rather than just seeing them as you know F Dev as this sort of a big amorphous blob they can blame or the developers don't know what they're doing or they don't they don't know how to play the game or they don't care but Phillip, when you actually have the developers on the stream what uh, phil has said what are some good things about fdev um one of the things that i do like about uh elite dangerous generally is is it it isn't a money thing i mean you can pick the game up for pretty cheaply and once you've got the game in your hand and you're playing it as long as you put the time in you can get whatever you want fleet carrier cutter um, it's not it's not about money. I mean, you don't even have to spend money on on arcs. You can earn that and say, right, I'm I'm just going to save my arcs up over the weeks, and then buy something. I mean, I I went and bought um, a skin for one of my uh, paint job for one of my weapons. Um, so I, I think it's a lot more accessible that way if you haven't got a lot of cash. You just need to buy the game. And you can often get you know the game quite cheaply. So I think that's that's a great thing. Um, community team's great. I, I do think that you know Elite Dangerous is a passion project for for David Braben. Yeah, I mean, it, I think it, anybody it who says it, you know that oh he's going to get rid of it, I think it would have to be a very serious situation for David Braben to turn around and say right we're killing off Elite because it is it's his baby. It's what's at the end of the day, it's the game that started off Frontier as a company. Isn't it? And I, I, I also like the fact that it's there's a lot about Elite Dangerous that is quite quirky British humour creeping in there. Yeah, there's so, a lot of influences, yeah. isn't there, coming in from various and different I'm, places. I'm sure you you must feel that some of the the accents and things used by some of the stations must be a bit odd for you, Phil. And have a sort of oh, very, very a... regional British accent. I mean, you go you go through to the bar, and there's a guy complaining about uh, exploration in a uh, is it Yorkshire or Lancashire accent? Yeah, yeah. Um, and of course, there's I mean, one of the ones that a lot of people might is the uh, it's it's one of the uh, traffic control 
controllers who sounds a bit like Daphne from Frasier. Frasier. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, he's got that, that Mancu Mancunian accent. Um, considering, you know, that the UK... You know, we do stuff for space exploration, don't we? I mean, we're pretty good at building satellites and things, but compared with, you know, you know the US and Russia and places like that, we don't really do very much in space, do we, as a, as a country? The thing um, is, you know, a lot of the things you engage with, with, you know, movies, TV programs, anything, all the sort of sci-fi, with the possible exception of maybe something like Doctor Who, it's all US. I just get so you do tend to sort of in your head think of space and yeah. sci-fi being you know us primarily I, 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 and some really good stuff i mean i'm going through babylon 5 at the moment for the first time in years and i'm really loving it as a series it's a really adult uh serious sci-fi you know making some really good points about human behavior and politics and various other different things um, in the same way, I think actually that something like Blake Seven that we had, you know, in which comes in for a lot of flack, even from its own fan base. In fact, one or two of the podcasts, um, I just got fed up with the digs about the quality of Blake Seven. It's kind of like it's it's an obvious, you know, goal to try and sort of like hit, but they still do it anyway. Um, yeah, of course the the effects were, but you know. The effects wouldn't be great in the late seventies if you had the same uh, budget as was it Z Cars or whatever it oh, was. Yeah, I mean, if you're trying to do a sci-fi series, you know, when your, your budget's five pounds, <laughs> of course everything's gonna look like you're not going to come away that. with something that looks like Star Wars. No. And uh, I mean, even you know the the graphics and everything that they used for the uh, space scenes That's in beautiful. Babylon Five. You know, look dated now, but yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah. I think the, the the biggest disappointment with Babylon Five is the fact that they they were told that the series was going to end at series four, so he tried to wrap it up quickly for series four, and then they said, "Oh no, now we'll give you another series." So his sort of five year plan got then compressed, and then he had to fill it out at the end. Which is a bit of a similarity with Blake Seven, because Blake Seven thought the same, didn't they? When they were when they were doing that, they did series uh, C, because they didn't do it by number. They did it series C, and then the only reason why they knew that the series was coming back was when uh, the final episode played, and the BBC announcer said, uh, "And Blake Seven will be coming back next year." And it's like, well, and, were... and, and a lot of the cast and crew didn't even know. It's like, whoa. Well, we're yeah, back no, again, no, no. are we? They wanted, you know, the management wanted to get rid of it, but the thing that stopped them was the viewing figures. Yeah, people loved it because I think you know it, it, was, it was. It was some really good character. It had some really good characters in it. It was character led. It wasn't effects led. Um, I mean, these days, you know, you can, you know, with the computing power and the the effects. I mean, you can do some fantastic things like we've seen in The Expanse, which is a brilliant example of a, a recent uh, sci-fi series that has, I've really enjoyed. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely loved it. Characters, special effect, everything sort of like gelled together, but that's just because of the time that it was made in. Uh, if they were trying to make something like The Expanse back in the 1980s or 90s, it would look very different. <laughs> well, I've just managed to buy five tons of, trit of tritium. <laughs> so we'll have to share that. I was looking actually at one of Phil's photos of Heb Isles uh, on the Discord, and it actually looked like, um, like it should. The paint job actually looked darker. With the red stripes uh i do have a photo somewhere hold on Let's see whether i can I bring it up 
So that's, of course, is how it looks at the moment. Yeah, which is which is quite grey. Which is quite grey, but the way that it used to look, I've just got to dig it out. Fortunately, I'm a bit organised on that now. So the first photo that I took, this is when I was out in Colonia last time, was that. So that's how it looked when I first got the carrier with the squadron shadow, shadow squadron, whatever it is. It's a lot darker. Yeah. Almost black, dark gray, very dark gray, black. It's more of a sort of a, a graphite base, yeah. isn't it? Um, and now it looks like that. So uh, I think that's, pr I don't know whether that's something that they intend or, you know, doing something about to try and get it looking like that or whether it's just, hey, in Odyssey, it looks like this. Um, but, you know, it's... It's sort of growing on me. It was a bit of a disappointment when Odyssey arrived and suddenly the carrier looked very different. Because I did actually get another skin for a while that I was using because I really didn't like the look of it. Uh, and that was... It would be uh, you know, quite shocking if uh, we found a crashed fleet carrier on the surface of a planet. That would be a great addition, wouldn't it? Especially if you could collect materials and things from that. Well, especially if it then sort of got people thinking that maybe there was a way of destroying a fleet carrier. <laughs> yeah, so then I went and changed, which is actually quite a nice paint job, and I was considering actually using it, but this is the the red squadron. She's like a white background, yeah. which... I, I, my, my issue with a lot of the fleet carrier paint jobs is that it's so dependent on the star that they can look very similar. Yes. I mean, at the Constitution, I went and bought the Constitution paint job just to see what it looked like. Because uh, <laughs> the preview on the actual... Uh, in the game, you know, doesn't particularly give away that much about the, the subtle changes with some of them. And to be honest, I actually can't see the changes between the uh, the paint jobs. I, I think the only way they could get around it is by showing you what the paint job looks like under different starlight conditions. Yeah. So I think it's one carrier jump after this, isn't it? And then I will be in the destination for today. Yeah. No one just reads Taurus. It's a long one. I like no, I thought. I know it's just a case of refueling it again. And you were saying well, that I'm, there isn't that much back. in system, is there? Well, the only place I've found for the tritium to buy is at uh, CB-42, Colonia's Endeavour, which is a mega ship. And I'm literally now buying it at uh, two tons a time. So that's going to take you some time then to fill the yeah. uh, well, I've, carrier I've, I've then? Yeah, just, I've just bought it all up. I bought up their supply. They had... Uh, yeah, I think 250 tons worth, roughly. That's all gone now, and it's just it's not restocking very quickly. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to need to get some people out looking for looking for some decent rings. Because I think we've got. Do, do we have? Uh, is it Baron von Noodle, who um, was saying about a fleet carrier with some tritium on board or something for us to resupply off at some point? Yeah, so he's, he's a. Wasn't he around Sajay or yeah. Colonia or something? Yeah. 
I, no, I, we're not in any problem. Any problem at the moment? We've got plenty of uh, tritium. Reserves. I barely touched mine. Absolutely barely yeah. touched mine. But uh, you know, I think the further we get on with this, the, the, the harder it's going to start to get. Certainly, after we we leave Sagittarius A star, it'd be interesting to see. Uh, I'll, I'll have to do some uh, working out. We roughly know what we're going to be using, and I think I'll be able to do some calculations and things and just work out what where we're going to get to at least. It's 81 jumps from Sagittarius A star to Beagle Point in the carrier, so it's quite a distance. We're doing five jumps. You know, it's... If we have to stop to refuel, then we just have to stop. People can go off exploring, etc, etc. So we need to cool down again. Yeah, we just have to play it by ear, aren't we? If we don't know, we don't know how many people we're going to have by the time we get there, and how many of those people are going to be interested in uh, feeding us tritium. Sixteen days, according to my calculations, uh, for us. If we do five jumps a day, and it's eighty-one jumps, it's sixteen days. So. Well, from from Sage to Beagle Point. Yeah. Two weeks, just over two weeks of travelling. Probably nearer three if we have weekends off. I think we have weekends off. Yeah, I think we have weekends off as well. It gives people a chance to explore, gives us a break. Uh, we can do some exploration as well because, you know, if we're in-game moving the carriers, it means less time for us to be actually getting out there and doing some exploration. So. Yeah, it, I think the thing is it's hard to justify. I mean, even though, you know, we're in the game, but when the family see that you're you're in the you know you're moving the carriers all day and then you say oh, i'm gonna go and play elite dangerous yes this it doesn't go down go, that well does it you, you, you want to do what <laughs> yeah is that so, yeah, right there's, commander there's a, there's a, you know there's a few things there's a few things i need to i need to get done you know I mean, and, it, and it it's would be, easter it would be holiday nice to be able to, yeah it's it would be nice to be able to see the kitchen sink again yeah it's the Easter holiday, and you know you you want to be. Yeah. That's mo most of the reason why we're we're doing a lot of this uh, work to get to Colonia sort of like for Friday, so that you know, because again, I mean, a lot of commanders will probably have quite a bit of spare time. You know, they might want to fly around Colonia during the uh, Easter holidays. Well, that's what I, that's what I thought. Okay, can I jump yet? No. I've got two and a half minutes before I do my second to last jump. Get rid of the bookmark and the star density is nicely growing now. This is more like it. Yep. Proper space. <laughs> None of that bubble rubbish. You don't realise how sparse the bubble is, but I, I suppose the reason why, you know, that it works for you know, base locations, not only because that's where the Earth is, but also you do, wouldn't want too many stars around the bubble. <laughs> I mean, Gandharvi is actually quite interesting because it is uh, part of the Colonia Bridge, but it was also part of the Colonia Highway. So, you know, it's another yeah. one of those overlapping systems where it's um, it had a station there, didn't it? It was one of the places that you would stop off at um, some civilization out in the void. Well, I noticed there was a there's a mega ship there who are doing sort of you know the pirates attack mission thing. Oh, so you might end up doing that, might you, tonight? I, I might. I'll have a bit of a play with that. A bit of violence. I can't really do it from here at the moment until my carrier gets here because I've only got a um, Type 9, which isn't... A Type 9 kitted out for hauling with no weapons. Whereas you want to take your hauler out and start a fight somewhere. Yeah, I want to get the hauler out, definitely. Arm it with some weapons. And... 
it's my ship of choice. Arm it with some weapons and just hit that uh, that zone. Yeah, I have to spend some time engineering it because I'm, I'm obviously in love with it now. Have you got your Corvette with you? Yes, I've got everything. You got everything, right? Pretty much. So I, I want to pick up some ships from uh, Colonia. Right. What are you after? I've got a, a a Mamba out there that I want to engineer. Oh, something that you bought earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I might have a look at the, what ships are on offer and just, uh, not that I can actually fit any, but I, I, I want a ship based at Colonia. Um, I might actually see what's on board and maybe make some space. Yeah, so um, I, I was using I was using the Mamba to do a whole load of missions in Colonia, and it was I, I really liked it. <laughs> I actually quite like the Mamba. I might get a Mamba as well. And it, it looks beautiful as well. So yeah, getting yeah, some Odyssey yeah, screenshots with that on the planet's surface yeah. would be lovely. I mean, uh, how much time have we got? You know, if you can find a nice shiny paint job, I think, you know. I, 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 can you get a chrome paint job for the Mamba? Yes, I have. Um, oh, oh. <laughs> I, can, I can set that up remotely. I've got a bit of time. I'll just... Because it's nice. We'll have a look at the, the Mamba and the chrome paint job. Because that's one of the paint jobs I went and picked up at uh, Christmas with the with the sale. Yeah, I, I, I was a bit sort of, you know... Resistant to that, I tried to tried not to spend the one money. You know, I'm regressing it now, though. I usually do ten because uh, I do like the chrome paint jobs. Although I only tend to like them for certain ships, um, but one of the ones I want to try and get a chrome paint job next time. I don't know why I haven't picked it up already, but for the Aspect Explorer. Um, yeah, I, I've I've got a gold paint job on my my Asp. That's yeah, you've had that. that it's a bit. It's a bit much. <laughs> uh, I have had that for a long time. Yeah, it's oh, a, they're absolutely freaking huge cutter, which I took through to Beagle Point a couple of years ago. This very cutter. If you could keep one ship, Commander, which one would it be? And this is open to everybody in chat as well, Phil. I mean, if if you could keep... You had to get rid of all of your ships apart from one. Which would it be? Um, that's, super, I, I, that's super tough. It is. I think I would keep the cutter because I've done a lot in it. But it's See, my, my, not the... My, go on, my go gut ahead. Reaction, my gut reaction was to say Cobra. So that's that's, that's my that's my emotional reaction. My my um, oh, thinking I? about oh, I it, I would it. probably keep my Corvette. Where is it? I've gone by it. I've got that many ships. There it is, Miramar. If I kept my Corvette, I would give up trying to land on planets. Did you see the picture of, I think it was uh, Commander Shelter's um, Anaconda trying to land on the planet? No. Oh, I love and that. It, 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 it picked the very top of a hill, and so the whole ship couldn't get onto the top of this uh, hill. So... You'd go for the Conda, would you, Phil? So how have you got your Conda fitted out? Is that uh, purely for exploration, or are you using that for combat? Is that Chrome? That is the Chrome paint job. Chrome. Yeah, we need to see that on a planet surface. But I also got the ship kits kit for the the member recently as well so it's 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 actually it's a ship that i've not used a huge amount to be brutally honest i like the sound of it <laughs> but it, it you... is a beautiful ship um but Bill, yeah, have, you, have you always used your condo for exploration or have you uh, have you used it for other things as well Right. Nearly, nearly cooled down. Thirty seconds to go. 
final jump. <laughs> Set. So yeah, I think I think I might have a look at getting a a, a Mamba. I, I just need something permanently based in, uh, and I don't want to transfer one of my ships from the bubble because that is amazingly expensive. So. Yeah, that, that's why I didn't do it. That's why I've left. They've been there for I don't know how long years. When was the last time you were in Colonia? Oh, a long, long time ago. So when the when the war was happening. Oh right. Whenever that was. Quite some time then. Yeah. Right, so I can now get into my last I mean, jump. So with the ship kit, you end up with all of these probes at the front, I think. If I remember rightly, where is it? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure you get those. I don't think they're on the default thing, are they? I don't know. I don't, I don't. I don't think so. What what um, ship kit have you got on there? There's just uh, that's just like the uh, just like the, the standard. It's not the. I don't, I don't know whether they do a Raider one for the Mamba, do they? It just sort of, I mean, it adds the, the tail fins and everything. You know, if, if you, yeah. Um, yeah. Sometimes they can be quite subtle, the the ship kits, and then other times it can be like subtle as a brick. I once joked that, you know, the, the person who designed the uh, ship kits had been the guy designing at Lotus in the early 70s F1 team, you know, with all I think it was the t when a T9 came out and it was all spoilers Yeah, yeah Not entirely sure why you need a spoiler on a Type 9 Any conversations going on that I need to hear about? It's getting a nice view though, out of the window Look at that that is a place to have a drink. Problem is, is these tables are always, always occupied. Always, yeah, know. they're always taken. It's like, hey, I know. your captain wants a table. Table is not I available, know. captain. It should be to issue the moon with an instruction to go and do something. You have absolutely zero authority on your carrier, even you know, even after you've spent several billion credits on it. Um, So, Phil, is is combat something you're going to try in the future, or is it something that just doesn't appeal to you? I mean, as you know, Richard, I absolutely love it. You do, and you, you've tried power play as well, which is something that I haven't. I mean, I've, I've done a bit of combat, and, you know, I, I got on with it okay. Quite enjoy it. I, I especially enjoyed it when it's... Um, you know, quite intense. Which the the high, if you if you're slightly outgunned, if you know what I mean, yeah. um, the ground combat can be fantastic. Really enjoyed it, and it's a good way of earning money as well. Yeah. But so the, the thing about the thing about power play was it wasn't necessarily the mechanics of power play that I enjoyed. It was the fact that I was winging up with people who were doing like a group activity. Yeah, and that because we were playing in open. There was a lot of, of chasing down other commanders in um, you know, the, the other factions, and uh, yeah, there was there was a lot of communication going on. It was it was really quite exciting, and there was um, you know when you see a, a fellow faction member getting interdicted, and you sort of you know track them down, swoop in, and, and save them. That that's quite a buzz. That might be something else for us to try, actually, when we're in Colonia over the fortnight. Uh, is maybe if we can, if a system needs some mercenaries to help out with some ground missions or something like that, possibly. I'll, I'll check in with the uh, the rest of my faction to find out what's going on and what's uh, what be the best thing to do. With the combat, I mean, because it is it is quite a good um, earner uh, if you get yeah. the right. I mean, I really enjoyed it. It's definitely something because I, I managed to get a uh, warrior rank recently, and uh, we need to we... make sure we don't destabilize the entire region. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't matter because we're leaving. Oh yeah. 
Bye. We we've wrecked the place, but you know we're kind of leaving now. Bye. Yeah, everything burning in the rearview mirror. Was there any reason, Phil, why you couldn't get your friends into Elite Dangerous? Was there anything that? What was the thing that was stopping them from getting interested? I think I want to sit down here actually for the. Uh... Oh, we've still got 10 minutes. I don't know why I've sat down. I was about to say, you have, you have friends here, Phil. Um, I think that's been one of the great things about the expedition is my friends list has uh, sort of expanded again because, sadly, a lot of the commanders who I was friends with... Um, didn't, don't play the game anymore. In some yeah, cases. a lot of a lot of old timers have drifted off. That's the same with any game, though, isn't it? Yeah. And I think it's, as you say, what's been quite nice is that being able to fill up um, with a few more friends, a few more new faces. They wanted entertainment, not an experience. That's kind of sad in a way, isn't it? Um, well, the thing is, there's, there's a, you need to get a little, put an, an awful lot of investment into the game in order to get something out of it. So I can see that there's, you know, there are games where you can get that hit very, very quickly with minimal effort. Yeah, and Elite Dangerous is certainly not that that kind of game, is it? You no, know, if, if for example, I mean, if if you're used to playing first-person shooters, then getting the next, you know, edition of Call of Duty or whatever, then that's you know what you're getting. You can get into that straight away and. It's very accessible, isn't it? Where yeah, I think it's... Elite Dangerous uh, isn't that accessible. And it, again, I think some of that's to do with the fact that when you when you start the game, it's a lot more difficult. Commander Dimebar was just saying this the other day. You know, I mean, since he got his fleet carrier, the game has has sort of changed again, because he's he's got the money in the fleet carrier. He's able to do far more than. I mean, if he hadn't got the fleet carrier, he'd be on board one of these carriers, I'm sure. You know, with us, but it's a different sort of experience. You're still getting the benefit, and, and you know, you can jump on board and you get no, none of the costs. What's what's a hallway game, Bill? I've, that's, the, that's a phrase I've not heard before. Oh, is that is that like you know, where you're just going down a, a tunnel, sort of like in, like in a shoot 'em up kind of like thing, uh, like in a first person shooter, where it's not that open. So, uh, some a game on rails sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, you know. I don't know. I, I've I've just not heard the heard the the phrase hallway game. The first thing that came into my head was um, the the company that make greeting cards, but that's that's Hallmark, isn't it? And <laughs> I I wouldn't have thought their games would be any good. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. So they they sort of like games where they like being led. They know what they've got to do because they're sort of like, you know, you need to complete this mission to be able to get this, you know, to whereas Elite Dangerous doesn't have any of that. It's just like, hey, here's your ship. Bye. Have fun. And it freaks some people out, I think. What do I do? Where do I go? Up well, to you, Commander. Ah, so, so they like um, watch, you know, going to the movies rather than reading the book. Well, I've got seven tons of tritium now. Like and deliver, so uh, we're we're well sorted. You've sort of got beyond Commander Dime, dime Bar levels, though. I'm, I'm just just buying what they're well. I say that here. old Commander Dime Bar levels. <laughs> so I think tomorrow is going to be a bit tougher because it's eight jumps. Which is 
But at least it's only six on Friday, so it's it's a bit of effort tomorrow, but it's it's going to be slightly easier on Friday, and then we get two weeks off. We'll still end up doing streams, but carriers won't be going anywhere, particularly. Yeah, we we don't necessarily have to be uh, streaming first thing in the morning or you know mid morning over lunch, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. No, I've never done so much streaming. But it's good to be back. I've enjoyed, and I've also managed to sort out one or two things with my um, stream and get some new followers. We've both done quite well with followers, haven't we? Both. I've so... noticed. Yeah, I noticed you've got your your, your uh, nice animated intro thing. Is that is that new? The movie you've got at the front. Uh... Or have you always had that, and I've just never turned up. Uh... <sighs> They're getting started. What? That one. Is that the one? I. I... I'm waiting for it to come up. <laughs> yeah, that that's it. That's the one. Yeah. I'll, um. Have you, yeah. Have you, that, have you always had that. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I sorted that out. Um. A while ago. Um. It's. Is it Canva or whatever it is. Uh. There's a place where it's basically a video. Yeah. And I I just thought I I need to, it was during my I'm going to you know. Try and, my perfectionist my perfectionist side sort of like kicked yeah. in um but it kind of it kind of works quite nicely i mean like i say i am not a pro streamer and um but neither would i i mean it'd be nice you know if someone came on and said you know hey we we'll give you a computer we you know as a sponsor uh that would be great but the likelihood of that happening is highly remote ah. I, I think it would my, it would just be nice to be able to stream while playing the game without feeling that everything else is going on or there's too much happening. Oh, who was that? So hypocrite. I think that's how you pronounce the name. So you've got passengers. I didn't know he had passengers. Yeah, people are sort of commanders are sort of like coming in. That's a nice bit of battered armor, that isn't it? Yeah, we need a wave from him. There we go. Salute. I'll do. So yeah, I think I will plump myself in the seat next to. Yeah, I am down with now. the people. <laughs> you get a better view. You do, it's, it's nice. It's just, it could just do with that strut there removing. I think. Well, it's not sat on the edge. That's the worst seat. I have to see whether there's a double glazing company in uh, Colonia that will rip all of this out and put me some new in. Another Did arcs payment. Know? Another arcs payment. I've just come up with an idea there. Yeah, where you can have your own customized windows. Have you noticed that the the ship windows aren't covered in scratches like your ship is normally? Yeah, I wonder whether that's something they're going to add later. Uh, where is the board? There it is. Two minutes ago. I've got three minutes. Three minutes, 40 seconds. That's a nice haircut, because that's the same haircut that I've got. The sweat back. I haven't gone for a commander who looks like me. Uh, I know some commanders have gone down that route, haven't they, where they've tried to make it look like them. So mine looks like my dad. Does it? Right. Yeah. I've got slightly more hair, although with every passing year, I'm getting closer and closer to looking like my avatar. That's a hypocrite's in chats. You're very welcome. It's good to have you on board, Commander. And yeah, that hair is great. I quite like my tash. I've, um, I sort of like based it on... Um, is it Michael Bean? Is that how you pronounce it? It's not Bean, is it? It's Bean. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, from um, the tash that he, Yeah, the tash that he had in the Abyss. Oh, yes. Yeah. When he was a Navy SEAL. Um, I that, that was kind of like an influence at the time for some reason. I think it had just been on television the night before or something. I just thought, you know, I just need that little 
I've I've not seen that film for so long. It's a good movie. Um, yeah. But it just... I mean, Aliens was on last night. Uh, on... I think it was ITV4. Um, right. But being as I've got it like on DVD, the box set and everything, I just didn't bother watching it. But it was great to see a good sci-fi movie on TV. Yeah, we've, we've got a whole list of, of films that we've been uh, trying to educate my son with. You know, we've got to give him a, a cultural education as well as... Uh... And how is he taking that education? Is he liking what he's seeing? or? Yeah, I think... It... Some he likes, some he doesn't. <laughs> so I think he, he, in, he enjoyed Jaws. It is a great movie. Uh, Jaws is one of those films where, you know, you're just about to go to bed, you notice it's on, so you watch it for five minutes, and the next thing you know, it's ended, and it's two o'clock in the morning. I'll tell you which is another film, is The Martian. Um, I always do that, you know, I always seem to come in, you know, if it's on Film 4 or something like that, uh, which is a movie channel in the UK, um, they, you know, it can be on, and, and I just end up all of a sudden sort of like watching the entire movie because it just hooks me every time which oh wow look at that have you is arrived are you there not... yep yeah. is that not a sight we have arrived in Gandharvi so we've arrived folks I am still on my way <laughs> but that is a few and a half. And even the lighting on the carry is lovely. Right, 20 seconds. An amazing thing that I... I often think that it's forgotten is you can go to each of those dots of light in that game, in this game. I mean, that's just mind-blowing, isn't it, really? We kind of take it for granted as commanders, you know, hopping around all of these systems and things, but the idea that, you know... If I wanted to go to that one there that I've just got the dot on, I could do it. So Phil's asking if we've seen Cloud Atlas or The Foundation. I think isn't Foundation on Apple TV? I've I've not seen either of those. Would you would you recommend those then, Phil? Right, my carrier has supposedly arrived. I'll just head into captain's room. Really nice view out of the window now. That's what it's all about. And it gets even better the further we get towards Sagittarius A star, doesn't it? Because the density increases. So we're going to get some amazing views out of these carrier windows. During the journey, so you know those twelve tons of tritium I've got. Yeah, <laughs> someone's interdicting me for them. <laughs> no, you don't, can't have them. Don't lose it. It's so all I've got. Oh. I see. I mean, it's it's like Phil was saying about the the lighting uh, and the effect that it has on the carrier. I mean, Heb Isles has got a very different look in this system. To what it had in the last one that we were in. It's very bright light. But I think I can live with this paint job. It's not the same as how it looked in Horizons, but you know, I can live with it. Um, were you wanting to take over, Commander Hatch? No, I won't today. I've got to uh, get on and do something. Right. I'll, I'll, well, I'll, I'll we'll in, do we'll do another few few minutes, and then uh, I will sign off. Got things to do and everything. You've probably got I, a job to do, haven't you? Uh, yeah, I've got a job to do. <laughs> Make some money. Grab some food and everything like that, but and I've also got to update all of the expedition sites and everything to say that we've arrived, so the commanders. No, but we have arrived. People can get off, have a wander about, see what there is. Just have a look at the map, just to have a quick gander about.
there's quite there's loads of stars to be able to I don't think there's any nearby nebula from what I remember uh, Phil normally comes up with a list of things to see doesn't he yeah <laughs> check out the discord the places to see because Phil usually put something in there starting to rely on him already How long have you got? To, how long before you jump into the system, Commander? I've I've arrived. I'm just docking with my uh, my carrier. So yes, I am here. You are here. Everybody. I'm in the right place. So that's um, perfect. So everybody, all the carriers should be listed in the system, and there we are. Everybody's there. Everybody in Isles. Flying casually, which arrived earlier today, and Mornington Crescent. That's that's great. And in the system, there are a few. There's a decent port there. And there's a platform over here, which I might have a look at because I really do love the platforms. The wandering. I don't need in. another. I don't need another hauler, Phil. Thank you. I've got. I've got one. I've got the best one. called oops yeah the oops the wandering in that's a great name for a carrier uh, so i've currently got so even with the uh the, the tritium i've just delivered i've got 96 tons of tritium on my carrier so all of the services on that is 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 the wandering in being decommissioned it says that it's active. There was, there was everything one, is one being, everything is suspended. Yeah, what, yeah. There was one carrier being decommissioned. Oh, it must be that one then, because it's the only carrier I think in the system, isn't it? Apart from us. Oh no, there's a couple down there. Neutron Highway Patrol. <sighs> Doghouse. <laughs> is that some commander who's having some problems <laughs> with? Uh, the wife, what due I, to his... That's what, I, that's what I'll be renaming my carrier to soon. So, yeah, that's not about... I mean, it's one of the reasons why we sort of, like, picked some of these systems, because uh, there's just a lot going in. And um, sadly, you know, the tritium, amount of tritium, now we're, we're into the tritium drought to a certain extent there is not a lot knocking around so it's kind of like where the mining we have got enough to get us uh we've got plenty of reserves and there is a port i think it's the next one that we stop at that has they had three thousand units of tritium on a surface port that was odyssey only Okay. But that's about it before we hit Colonia, so. You can buy well, I'll do, it. I'll do some, do some exploration and prospecting and looking for a, a ring system. I'm sure someone in Discord will let us know. Where... You're not going to stick around just buying two units of tritium every half an hour then? No, I was just doing that until my carrier got here. Now, now I can get a ship that would actually move out of the system. Right, I think that's it, Commanders, for today's stream. I think this is one of the longest I've ever done. It's over three hours, but, uh, you know, it's been fun. Yeah, thank um, you very much, Richard. As much fun as it's good with the Discord. Um, like I say, we'll try and uh, do some more streams uh, when we get to Colonia, but, of course, we've got, you know, a couple more days of travel before we end up that. So I think it's... it's Is it 10, 10 o'clock again tomorrow in-game? I move? think so. Yeah, I'm happy we'll, to do that. Uh, do you want to do the stream tomorrow? Yeah, I'll, I'm happy. To, I'll, I'll give that a go. I've, you know, and then later on, I might be able to take over. Doing a three-hour shift, isn't it? Um, and then later on, I I can maybe take over depending on what, how much work I get done today. Um, is, is Dimebar uh, available tomorrow? Or is he? 
I don't know whether he's he'll probably be working. I think I think towards I, the end of the know, week. I, yeah. Dime bars kind of like busy. Yeah, um, I'll ask him. You can always say but that. you know, I mean, you know, once we arrive at Colonia and everything, it'd be interesting to get his views on Colonia because, of course, it's the first time he's been there. So, be interesting yeah, to, to see, see what he thinks. I'll have to see if we can round up some of the others, see if we can get them on as well. Right, so that's it, Commanders. Thanks very much for uh, but being before with you us. Go, yeah. Before you go, there's a uh, a number of um, places of interest posted already onto the Places to See channel. Thank you very much, Phil. Excellent job, Phil. Thanks for being in chat as well. Thanks to everybody who's uh, watched. Like I say, moving carriers isn't exactly the most exciting thing to stream about. We just try and fill it in with as much um, interesting chat as possible. I use the word interesting as... Hello, Ardriax. Uh... Sadly, we're just ending, but we will be back tomorrow, moving the carrier again at uh, 11 o'clock British Standard Time, which is 10 o'clock in game time in Elite Dangerous, if you are a commander, which I assume you are. We're just sort of like winding it down at the moment. We've We've had enough of moving carriers. But yeah, we'll be knocking about moving the carrier tomorrow. And it's a long one. Oh, you've been knocking about. Well, thanks for watching anyway. We're trying to fill the space in between the cools, cool downs on the uh, carriers, which isn't always easy, but we're... We're trying to uh, do as much as we possibly can. We'll be I'm... really desperate for conversation by the time we get to Beagle Point. I mean, one of the things we might, I think, well, we're definitely going to have to introduce our special guest commanders, I think. Yeah. So, you know, put the word out and... Yeah, so we think that, you know, everything Elite is always amazing. So, uh, I, I mean, you know, some people haven't experienced carriers jumping um, and also haven't seen what the Galaxy has got to offer. So it's it's just a case of streaming each of the jumps and just having a natter about it and also getting the information out there about where we are. People can see where we are. Um, and it's starting to get really beautiful as well. That's a great thing. So, yeah. For the second time, I will say, um, Tara, I will be back tomorrow uh, on Commander Hatch's stream. So we'll be probably starting up again. I don't know what about half ten, something like that. Probably uh, half past tenish, yeah. Half past you, ten. You get get into the and um, start nattering and say about what we've been up to in this system over the, the the next 24 hours so until then commanders thanks very much for tuning in and i will see you all tomorrow <laughs>